turn it around to the um, reverse side, where you see the two great seals of the United States of America. Yep. Okay? Now, if you notice, it says those are supposed to be the two great seals of the United States of America, correct? Yep. Those aren't. Those are the two seals of the Order of the Illuminati. Now, I have all this memorized from my days in the Illuminati. Now, this went on the dollar bill in 1935, but this reflects ancient beliefs of secret societies that go back literally before the birth of Christ. It symbolizes the ancient goal of secret societies of the establishment of what in scripture we see in Revelation 13 as the reign of the beast and the false prophet. Of the Great Seal, it's a very fascinating story. <laughs> well, I got one right here. So. The Great Seal of the United States, or is it the Great Seal of the Illuminati? There's a lot more than meets the eye.
And welcome everybody to Spiritual Warfare Friday with your hosts Dan Badandi and Brian Reese and my brother Jason Badandi in the background. And we got two special guests today. Uh, they're going to remain anonymous and we're going to expose the Jehovah Witnesses, guys. We're going to get deep down into what the Jehovah Witnesses are about. The Watchtower of Deception is the title of tonight's broadcast. And welcome, buddy, in the uh, chat room. If you're watching on YouTube, guys, and uh, sign on to YouTube and join us in the live chat. And we're going to take questions and comments later and also take phone calls later on as well. Uh, so we got a big show tonight. It's going to be awesome. And again, I'm Dan Badandi. It's uh, Brian Reese, our host. And so, guys, um, before we get started, I want to thank ShakeAndWakeRadio.com for carrying the show. And uh, this is going to be an awesome show, man. ShakeAndWakeRadio.com for carrying the show. Thank you, Annie, so much. And also, uh, thank you, BeforeIt'sNews.com. I'm a contributor right for them, so please check them out daily, guys. And also, uh, tonight's show is brought to you by WattsLeather.com. It's where your custom leather project becomes a reality. WattsLeather.com. So please check them out, guys. So, yeah, and uh, today we're going to be exposing um, uh, Charles Tace Russells. Uh, he was the uh, founder of Jehovah Witnesses. Uh, yeah, now in his book called The Watchtower, which is that, you know, version of the Bible. So we're going to get to that more. And uh, first of all, uh, Brian, take the floor here. And uh, Brian's uh, good friends with these um, uh, two people here. And we can't, you know, again, we have put a silhouette over them because they want to remain anonymous. And I don't blame them. You know what I mean? It's for their security. So uh, God bless you guys. And thank you so much for coming on. So go ahead, Brian. You got the floor, brother. Yeah, bless you, Dan. Welcome, everybody, to Spiritual Warfare, uh, The Watchtower of Deception. It's going to be, like Dan said, a really exciting broadcast. Can't wait. It kind of hits home for me with the whole Jehovah Witness narrative. Mm. Um, I have some family members that are well and on the other side of the family that are still involved in this. And I think it's a very special broadcast to help understand and really get into uh, th these two individuals that's going to be on as our guest. We'll introduce them in a second to really understand and hone in how dangerous this is. And, and I'm not, and for the record, on the spiritual warfare Friday, we're not here to, you know, tear down and break down and, and upset anybody that's in the Jehovah Witness. We're trying to, what well, one at the end of the day on this program, we want to uh, bring all glory to the Father and the mm -hmm. Son, Jesus Christ. And we're going to, we're going to really dissect and, and pull into this thing and really understand and get a grasp on what Jehovah Witnesses are, what they, what their doctrine is, what their theology is, and what they they talk about the new light and all these different things. There's these books and all these uh, stuff, and these two that are coming on tonight are going to be bringing it home for us to uh, and really talk about their testimony, talk about their walk, talk about the what they have done, and and just to literally recently come up out of this uh, Jehovah Witnesses and walking this walk out with Jesus Christ our Messiah. So, anyways, with all further with all that being said, I'm going to talk to Sir Tony and Miss LaDonna, and uh, welcome you all to Spiritual Warfare Friday. How are you? And thank you for coming on with me and Dan tonight. Oh, thank Hi, you. We're thank great. You. How's it going? <laughs> yeah, it's been it's a blessing, you two. And uh, uh, we've had a lot of time to talk off air and uh, get to know each other. And uh, tonight, we're just going to get into this thing and talk about the Jehovah Witnesses. I know you all was saying that this is all new to you, what you're walking this thing out, you know, reading the scriptures, getting into and things. And we're all learning everybody in the broadcast, everybody that's in the chat, but me and Dan are still learning. Absolutely. Um, we got, we got a lot to, we got a lot to do and a okay. short little time, short little time. So yeah, I've been on the radio you, since uh, 2009, for example, exposing a lot of stuff and I'm still learning more. Uh, just when I think I'm almost at the end of the, you know, down at the end of that rabbit hole. Yeah, it just it, it, yeah. there's more to go, way more than you could even imagine. But uh, yeah, it's always a learning experience. And um, like when we study the Bible, I mean, I'm always studying because like you can't stop studying because it, you'll never. I mean, like none of us will ever concept the entire thing 100 percent until we're in the spirit. But yeah, so if you guys want to give a great introduction to yourselves, uh, just you know, tell you how, how, tell us how you got into uh, Jehovah Witnesses. And all that didn't work from there. Okay. Well, uh, I'll start first. Uh, I uh, became a Jehovah's Witness. Well, I would say I got uh, introduced to it about 22 years ago, maybe a little bit uh, further back than that. Uh, someone who I knew, uh, they had some literature at their house. And uh, and uh, it, all, it seemed like that the literature has a ring of truth or something that's like a catchphrase. Uh, I come across a book called You Can Live Forever on Paradise Earth. That was something that no doubt uh, in world's conditions, you know, you see a 
a phrase or a title like that, you know, it's quite interesting. So I looked into it and, uh, you know, some of the things seem to have a ring of truth. You know, they would quote, partially quote, looking back at it, you know, certain things. And then it says, and uh, so a little bit different from what I was used to. Uh, my mom had me going to a church, you know, uh, and I really wasn't paying attention at that time. I couldn't say that I was really a Bible reader at that time, but it seemed like this kind of got me, uh, it, it kind of caught my attention as it were. And so I started to read the book and I was like, man, you know, this is quite interesting. Then uh, the person, well, she had like another book called Reasoning on the Scriptures. And uh, so I uh, started to look into that book and they started quoting uh, certain things about holidays and, you know, and was saying in the encyclopedia, you know, about this holiday is considered to be pagan. And so that very next day, I mean, really, when I came across this literature, I was up for the whole night reading this information because it just it just caught my attention. So I said, I'm going to see what they're saying is true for. I'm going to get up the next day because I didn't go to sleep that whole night. And I went to the library and I uh, looked at some of the books that they directed you to. And I'm like, man, they're telling the truth. But looking back on it, they were just telling half the truth. So if I just want to just leave it there, I don't want to get too long winded right now. And I have my wife uh, uh, tell her story about how she was introduced. Well, um, I was 14 years old, um, just had my first daughter. And I remember I was just walking in the neighborhood and um, a, a witness couple had approached me and, you know, we had a lengthy conversation and um, I mean, we really just end up being, you know, really good friends. Um, so I never got, you know, into it. I mean, I would study a little bit, drop off, study a little bit and drop off. And I know I, I did that probably for 25 <laughs> years or a little longer um, until uh, I finally did decide to get baptized. But I don't know what was holding me back from getting baptized. I, I, I don't know what it was, but um, it took a long time for me. But I was just approached by that couple and they were really nice people. They, it's like they yeah. love bombed me, you yeah. know, <laughs> yeah. for all those years and just didn't give up, Yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's how yeah. I got started. So there are some good people uh, who are, you know, we look back at as friends, you know, there are some loving people, you know, uh, some of them will give you the shirt off their back. You know, some of them will be there for you, but, uh, uh, you know, but it only goes as far as you are, as long as you're in that watchtower or you, as long as you're a uh, Jehovah's Witness, that's as far as it goes. Once you stop certain things, then, you know, uh, uh, it's a it's a different story. That's right. Yeah. So, right. I mean, but, you know, my heart goes out, you know, to, to some, uh, well, to like a lot of them, because there's a lot of good people there in that organization. And they feel like they're doing they the right thing. They're doing the right thing. Right. They have they the really same do. outlook that I perhaps had. You know, they perhaps was going through something in their life. Uh, you know, there was perhaps a tragedy because someone perhaps has lost a loved one. Then they have a book that's talking about that. You yes. know, uh, any particular subject matter that uh, might be disturbing or might be on a person's mind that might trouble somebody, they had literature for that. Yes. So that's what kind of draw, draws people into the organization giving them like a glimmer of hope that way uh, through their literature. So they, they, do they treat you indifferent? Like after you um, leave the watchtower, after you leave the organization, they treat you differently, don't they? When they well, see you yeah. out in public or they kind of shun you pretty much. Yes. Well, I had that happen here recently. Um, this lady was like a spiritual mom. I've been with her for a lot of years. <laughs> I, I know probably 30 years I've been knowing her mm -hmm. and recently she called me, but I've been hesitant to speak with her for a couple of years yeah. now, since my, my husband and I've been out of the organization. I knew that when I talked to her, that our relationship was going to be over. Mm -hmm. So she called me and I was like, I have to call her back. And, you know, we had the conversation. I had mentioned that we had left. I gave her a couple of reasons why, you know, she was shocked and she said, I cannot believe that you left Jehovah. I said, I did not leave God. 
I left the organ. We left the organization. Yeah. We didn't leave God. We haven't lost our, our love for God, our exactly. faith in God. We have not done that. But I, you know, gave her the reasons why. And she said, well, I'm going to call you back. And she's never called me back. Yeah. I know that our relationship is over, that she'll never speak to me again. Yeah. And, I wow. had, and uh, I had a best friend. Uh, um, we could talk about anything, you know, his personal issues, uh, things that he was going through. Uh, actually uh there was a time when he was he was distrustful of even some of his own family members about sending them some of his money i mean he sent me a large sum of money so that i can uh you know put it in a place where he wanted to uh you know to actually go that's how much that he trusted me but then when i started to find out some of these things about the organization and that's thinking that you know we're on that level you know uh, that was the last. I mean, uh, he basically said on that note, I talked to you later and I haven't heard from him in about about since we mm -hmm. left about yes. two years. So, yeah. Yes. So basically, like I say, because they believe that if you leave the organization, you're actually leaving God. You know, they actually put that organization. They believe that God has chosen that group of people, that organization. Yes. To uh, dispense spiritual truths. And to actually to leave them would be like an apostasy, you know, yes. like almost like the 10 tribes that actually apostatize. That's how that yeah. they actually, I mean, like that you're going out and, uh, you know, uh, I think going and start to worship like a golden calf, as it were. Yeah. So, I mean, so, I mean, once the word is out, they will shun you. They yeah. I talk to you at that point. They, 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 they feel like that, you know, um, if you leave the organization that you have just just left God himself, yes, exactly. you you know, mm -hmm. you're just on Satan's side. Yeah. It's only two sides. It's yeah. the organization. Then it's Satan's side. So if yeah. you left the organization, then you're basically handed over yeah. to the devil. Yeah. You're leaving Jehovah. Yes. Yeah. Literally leaving him, leaving God. So, so it's it, it. So real quick, it's. uh the rejection part of it and then now walking this out with messiah with jesus christ now and learning and having the scales fall off your eyes and understanding the biblical narrative and really honing in on that on the human standpoint of it the human side of it the rejection you know getting stabbed in the heart and cut you know the rejection part of it we've known these people your buddies your friends etc and to know that rejection now it's hard to find fellowship right like to really yes. and, and or to really find. yeah exactly or to even find family i mean because some of these people now we're fortunate because we're like first generation there was witnesses but i know people who are like third generation i mean since the founding of charles Taze russell and their whole family is in this yeah mm -hmm. so and so and then some people they have like uh they i guess their employer is a Jehovah's Witness. Yeah, they might live with us. Oh, well, these ones that are still in the organization that are they are finding out about the organization. They're called PMOs. They're physically in, mentally out. So they, you know, they're scared to say anything because if they say something, you know, if it gets back to the elders, then you know they will be shunned and everything that they know, their whole family, yeah, their friends, it. they lose everything. Yeah. And so some a, cannot handle yeah, it. Yeah, and they commit suicide because yeah. some some people have actually committed suicide because they've literally lost everything. Their family. There's mm -hmm. I mean, uh, sometimes the elders might they don't um, they might kind of hint at you may want to divorce your spouse because that's almost like uh, it's almost like you're practicing witchcraft and trying to force them to actually do it. Uh, you know as well. So I know people who have actually been coerced into um divorcing their spouse because they left the organization yes. so and therefore when you go through certain things like that you know for people like that my hearts do really go out to such ones because like i say they lose literally they lose everything yeah so, yeah true but the bible says the father is not the author of confusion so it sounds like discord and, and confusion like in with man's interpretations or theologies and demands mindset so it's causing all kinds of emotional unnecessary stress and it's like, yes. are we supposed to love our brothers and sisters? But see, and I'm it, this is listen up, everybody in the broadcast. This is it, this is going on in the 
you know, I hate to say, well, it starts with a five. I don't know. Dan has had broadcast in the past. I don't want to say it. Mm -hmm. In the chat, they're talking about the 501, you know what? And uh, these things are still embedded. The tentacles are embedded. You know, we're talking about all kinds of denominations. Even with this Jehovah Witness narrative here, there's all kinds of different things and fear tactics and and yes. causing somebody to be in distress and then like oh my goodness i'm losing my faith i'm losing g you know i'm losing the fight i'm losing god or you know jehovah i'm losing everything my soul i'm you know all these things and it's a fear tactic fear tactic uh and it's an infiltration in my opinion and then you you're supposed to be free in christ not you know free in men you know what i'm saying so yes. yeah so um give them to the doctor to get lots yeah, of medication yeah, yeah. just to keep them from losing their minds yeah. altogether. i yeah. know a lot of well, people on yeah. medication they can't or drinking uh, alcohol right. pretty heavy, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or they might have serious sins, yeah. according to the the Watchtower, and you know they would rather just keep doing it because they know if they say something, they're gonna be disfellowshipped. Mm -hmm. I will. I I know. I've been there. So, um, so this, the, the, this this is not really a question. This is just Jehovah Witnesses differ. From mainstream Christianity in several ways, right? So you got Jehovah Witness reject the doctrine of the Holy Trinity, yes. and then they they think about they look at the Father, the Son. They don't look at the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit, like we would do on here on Spiritual Warfare Friday. But instead, they see God as one person, and Jehovah is yes. as Jehovah, and Jesus is the Son who He created. Yes. So then it then yeah. you talk about. I didn't. Uh, go ahead, Tony. Go ahead. Yeah. So uh, they believe that uh, Jesus is the sole uh, creature, as it were, that God has created and all other creation that he uh, had used him to create all other things. Mm. But now before uh, he came to earth, Jehovah's Witnesses believe that uh, before his pre-human, well, his human existence in heaven, he was called Michael. So mm. they make the reference that Jesus is Michael, the archangel. Yes. Mm. And then mm. You know, came, uh, came down to earth and went back to heaven. Now he's back as Michael, you know, the archangel. Yeah. Yes. And, you know, of course, they mm -hmm. use scriptures like, you know, uh, uh, and uh, he will give the archangel's call, the call of an archangel. And so they'll say, see, this is none other than Michael, the uh, archangel. See, they use phrases like that to kind of, you know, well, they twist the doctrine, as it were. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they jump all over like the place from one scripture. You know, they use a whole lot of what I've come to understand nowadays is a lot of uh, isogesis instead of exogesis. Mm -hmm. Isolate certain scriptures and instead of reading, uh, you know, like the whole context of things, you know. Well, so, yeah. I have a family member. Uh, she's 80 something years old. And then just until like a few years ago when we sent her an actual KJV Bible, she had never read the Old Testament. So what's your all's take on that? She has never read the Old Testament. So what brought this all about is literally the deacons or however, whatever they associate with. I think it was the deacons of that, of the Jehovah or whatever she goes for the Jehovah Witness. They're considered to be elders. Elders. Like, yeah. Yeah. Servants. Yeah. They was talking about, they did a teaching on Genesis 6, which baffled my mind, talking about the Nephilim and the Nephilim. Uh, people give me a hard time how I pronounce it, but welcome to Spiritual Warfare Friday and a little bit of Kentucky twang here with Brian Reese. But my thing is, is they, um, uh, they was talking about the Nephilim, the giants. So they was teaching truths. But they was not teaching the Old Testament. They was teaching. They had like a guest or something come over, and like a special speaker. They was talking about these narratives, but they had never they had never read the Old Testament. So it was baffling my mind. They was talking about fallen angels and everything, giants, and and I was you know listened to this conversation with the eighty something year old woman, and she never had read the Old Testament. So what do you all say about that? Is that is that like everywhere with the Jehovah Witness? Like they well, just don't they don't they don't read the Old Testament? Actually, uh. And my part of uh, being Jehovah's Witness, uh, you know, I was pretty studious. Uh, you know, I tried to learn as much as possible. Uh, they had a book called uh, All Scriptures Inspired, and they did go through from the Old Testament mm -hmm. or they call which which they consider to be the Hebrew scriptures on through to the Greek scripture. So mm. uh, so I mean, so they read it. But yet when you're uh, they give you the publication to read and it's almost like it's like this pair i mean how their books are phrased it's like they have a paragraph 
they'll put a question under the paragraph or uh you know below the uh the paragraphs on the first page and they'll say that the answer is in there so really the answer is there that they want you to find that fits their belief yes and so mm -hmm. basically so as you're studying you know and we was encouraged to do that used to be because now it's changed um you had a highlighter and pen and you know you'll go over that and you know they'll point out a few scriptures or a whole lot of scriptures that really didn't have too much to do with the whole context of the thing but they would isolate certain points in there uh mm -hmm. and to bring out a point to always point toward their way of theocracy because they believe in a the uh you know like uh uh they believe that god was directing them and also that uh basically that when you read the scriptures or basically certain things that they would uh tell you they would always try to uh relay it back to the organization mm -hmm. you know it was almost like a like a uh something like that you can learn about how to be a faithful jehovah's witness that's so, how you know so so the elders so the elders and everybody is the dictators right so they have all the knowledge and you can only learn am i taking that the right way how you're saying well, it like they, they can only understand so much to the congregation so to speak is well, that because i'm because i'm what i'm getting from other family members they're they're all defragmented they don't know what it, it there's no direction is what well, I'm, I'm hearing all kinds of discord you know well, in actuality we all follow the same script as it were i mean matter of fact the same Jehovah's Witnesses will always brag and say, uh, you know, no matter where you go, if you was to go from, let's say, from Kentucky, if I was to go to Kentucky to to California, we're always going to be on the same page when it comes to the Watchtower magazine because they were always, you know, they all studied the same thing per se. Now, there was little things about the congregations that they had certain issues that if there was local needs, they would discuss those things. But all in all, they did kind of uh, have everything was cookie cutter for the most mm. part and they would also encourage you to do the research that's on the website, yeah, the website. not yeah. looking only their out literature. only their literature don't look out if you wanted to go to the encyclopedia britannica don't do that just just study from what they have yeah. on the website yeah yeah exactly so they didn't want you mm -hmm. to do your uh be an individual thinker yeah, they want to yeah, yeah they don't want you to think freely they want to give you what they feel that you need. Exactly. Yeah. You know, now it's funny it's, too, because like um the Bible, right? The Bible says it's uh, ready for reproof. In other words, God wants you to challenge his information and this way you can see it for yourself. But that's mm -hmm. kind of dictatorship. And they say, oh, don't look anywhere else. Just here. Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, don't ask questions. Just do what he tell you. And uh, that's kind of weird. And the Jehovah Witnesses and um, and uh, the Mormons do that same thing. And all yeah. these other religions and cults do that. But the Bible itself, it says it's ready for reproof. In other words, like if you want to challenge, mm -hmm. you go for it. And you're going to find that's 100% correct. Yes. Yes. In actuality, now you can kind of question things if you were going through a Bible study. Because they figure that um, if you bite onto their literature and you want to study. I was one of those ones who... When I found that information I was telling you about, I was like, wow, this has a ring of truth. I actually went to the hall and said, I want a Bible study because when you read their literature, it always focuses on if you want to learn more, you know, uh, you need to have a Bible study because Jehovah's Witnesses believe that you cannot, they are actually told, you cannot understand the Bible outside of them. If you revert to reading your uh, the Bible on your own or let's say a group study there's a you know a few of like the brothers coming together that's shunned against because they figure that you can kind of go off into they have actually said thinking back like the world thinks see mm -hmm. so it's like i mean but in the beginning you know i mean it's like all the things that i've come to find out about Jehovah's witnesses i if i would have been told these things and you know up front I would have, you know, uh, you know, put my spring shoes on and ran up, you know, the opposite direction. But because it was like a gradual thing and they do mm -hmm. a like a love bombing, like, you know, they show this love and this. It seems to be this harmony, this unity among the brothers. But when you get into it, it's it's, it's totally it's different. It's not that way. Yeah. You know. Yeah. They say that that uh, the Bible cannot be properly understood without jehovah's visible yeah, organization. organization yeah wow so you can't understand the bible mm -hmm. unless 
you know, you have them to explain it to you. Mm -hmm. So the elders have to interpret it. The elders yeah. have to be the interpreter. Yes. Yeah. So, and, but at the end of the day, well, and there's some churches, I hate to, I'm not trying to bring any other, I'm not going to say any denominations, but there is bodies of churches that uh, gather in my local area that will even go up to and, and start debating about the Holy Trinity, about the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. They get all crazy with it, right? So what, what I was mentioning earlier when I was kind of touching base on this, we're, we're talking about Jehovah and then Jesus. And then you get into this whole narrative that he's just, you know, I've hear all kinds of different things from the Jehovah narrative, Jehovah witness narrative that he was just a great prophet. Or I even heard some crazy stuff that he was an ascended master, all this crazy stuff, unreal, unrealistic stuff. And mm -hmm. at the end of the day, Jehovah witnesses, and I hate to, I'm not putting down the organization. They believe that the soul ceases to exist after death and, and there is no afterlife. Is that correct? So yeah. that, that that's yes. baffling my mind. Yes. It's like, uh, like they explain it how like uh, ritual, like a, well they say that you're sleep like yeah. it's like you're sleep soul sleeping. <laughs> yeah soul yeah. sleeping huh so yeah. how's the soul sleeping what are you gonna do after the soul sleep so here's one of this is what i mean so when you get into me and dan did a michael um uh, uh, i think we did a Mo, debating on moses's body several months ago and then when you mentioned that's the first time i've heard you all talk about that about uh they they say that jesus is michael I'm talking about an archangel narrative so that's what i'm saying some of this jehovah witnesses they know Old Testament stuff. They know about angels, demons, and stuff, in which they was teaching some of my family right. members. It's baffling my mind that they would even say Jesus is literally Michael when he goes into ascending into heaven. So it's baffling my mind because um, the whole book of Jude talks about Michael and the devil debating mm -hmm. over Moses' body. I mean, there's yeah. so it's it's insane. Uh, you know, it, that's a whole other topic. But my point is, is the they know about the bodies of angels. Mm -hmm. They teach these things, but it's like way off the cuff, you know, way off the Richter scale when you're denying the Holy Trinity. And that mm -hmm. baffles my mind and see Pope. And I hate to say it, the Pope will say the exact same thing says Jesus died for nothing on the cross. So it's the same. It It's the same broaden path, either way you look at it. And remember, Tony, we had this conversation. I got to throw us out there since I said the Pope. Pope Francis is on record saying that he's going to baptize aliens when they show up in their motherships. Okay. Heard, yeah. I heard that myself. So. Yeah. So here's, here's a funny, I remember our conversation face to face, Tony. So what are they going to do with the watchtower book? This, you know, when the aliens show up out of their mothership, AKA fallen angels, um, they're going to, so Jehovah witness organization is going to thrive. Right. So how are they going to explain and then I know you're going to, what your answer is going to be, what are they going to do when they show up? They're going to, so they're just going to throw out the new one and then rewrite, correct? If that actually happens, they're going to have what's called new light. New light. New deception. Yeah, <laughs> new light. It's, it's now God has now revealed this to us. And he kept, matter of fact, uh, they just recently had a, uh, because there's times when I try to go back on that website, not to, you know, look for uh, understanding, but just to perhaps see how perhaps uh, what they're doing now, the deception, because I still have like, uh my previous wife's family is still uh you know they're you know witnesses joe witnesses and every now and then one might especially one of them she gives me a call so i'm just hoping one day that you know i mean just kind of keeping up with a little bit of their stuff just to see where they're at and of course i follow certain channels that kind of keep me right because don't get me wrong i mean after so many years of being bombarded by their literature, they speak a foreign language. They even call it the, I mean, the new language, right? Uh, uh, what's it? Uh, the, yeah, even they, they say that they have this new language that they talk, and it's totally different from Christianity. You know, mm -hmm. um, when you read their Bible, like instead of faithful steward, they say faithful and discreet slave. See, yes. and so I, I mean, so if I talk to somebody who's a Christian. They're like looking at you like, what are you talking about? Yeah, you know they saying? wouldn't know what you're, yeah, talking, what you're about. talking about. It's like you're talking yeah. a different language. Yeah. And only Jehovah's Witnesses mm -hmm. know this language. Yeah. And, and yeah. And but anyway, back to what you were saying, they will. I mean, they're already training them uh, saying that you can only trust us. Even if we say something that you that might sound disturbing, they have been told you you cannot question us. Basically, you must listen to what we have to say we are god's chosen vessel yes that he's using on earth and all other groups 
is part of Satan's organization. Yeah, and that's one of the the things that yeah. got me. Like, and and you know, I remember when Tony and I got married, and we were sitting here, and they were doing the meetings on Zoom, yeah. and I remember yeah. them saying that Everything. you know if something happens and it doesn't seem right mm -hmm. you follow the organization and i'm like Faith no that that does not sit right yeah. in my spirit mm -hmm. i cannot yeah. do that yeah we yeah. both look at like yeah. that's some uh jim jones kool-aid drinking stuff right yeah there. I yeah because if something's like uh you know <laughs> grabbing at you like that more than likely it's the holy spirit telling you get out of there or something you know they yeah. don't want you to listen to that you know yes. yeah so basically whatever that they're told they're going to do because like I said, a lot of these people, they are invested. It's almost like that they say, we have your children. We have we have you, basically. We have everything. I mean, we know people. Let's say the uh, back in uh, times past, they had a date of 1975. 75. And they had, a, a, I think, a talk going around saying, stay alive to 1975. 75. Stay alive to 75. And people were going off. I mean, because they figured that the world was going to come to an end around that date, right? So there was people, they were selling their houses. They were selling their properties. Yes. They were uh, getting full time in the, the Jehovah's Witness ministry. Yeah. They, they were becoming pioneers, giving up their jobs, giving up everything because they thought the world was going to end. Yes. Oh, while and you're on that right there, uh, that website you gave me, uh, jwfacts.com, uh, yes. it says right there, since uh, 1879 deception when they started, right? The Watchtower mm -hmm. has preached the end of the world will be soon and predicted that it would come in 1914. Then they said it was 1925. Then several yeah. dates throughout the exactly. 20th century. And when you go to the Bible, right, um, Jesus says, but the day of the hour, no Nobody man knows. knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my father only. But basically, when he sends Jesus back and puts an end to everything, you know what I mean? And uh, so uh, the Bible says one thing, they say another, and um, then they're giving out dates. And, uh, and what, you know, while you're on that too, uh, what kind of excuses? Like, did you ever ask, uh, well, what happened in 1914? What happened in 1925, 1975? What, what changed things? Uh, did you ever ask them that? Oh. Yes, you can't ask that. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, see, yeah, if you ask the questions once you're in, I mean, yep. see, once you start uh, coming to an understanding of their errors, I've known people who actually brought their errors to them and they basically told them, uh, I mean, they were actually disfellowship because of that. Yes. If you keep pushing the issue, you're, I mean, they'll try to kindly talk to you and say, brother, you're kind of causing uh, disunity among the brethren and the issue of scripture. Mm -hmm. That you know, we must be in unity. They yes. even got songs about unity. Yes. So they stress that organizational unity. And they'll say, Well, because you're doing this, you're causing discord among the brothers. Hmm. And God does not like division like that. So you are basically one who is going against God's will. And if you don't stop it, well, but first you get marked. First, they'll give a public talk. Yeah, you're yeah, that mark And you. if and uh everyone there knows who they're talking about, because if you was the one who was doing like talking they're all going to be thinking oh we know who that was and then you continue to do that then you'll be this fellowship they won't say the reason why but everyone's going to think oh we know i mean there's only two things that they if you uh if you're announced as this fellowship they think two things you are either an apostate yes or you have committed some unforgivable sin or just you just deep into doing like immorality so uh so that's how that they're going to think because they've been trained like that yeah so mm -hmm. when you get set, when you get this fellowship or you're marked i mean yes. it's like everybody stays away from you yeah. they know it's like a start not, a letter yeah they don't they're not supposed to talk to you yes mm. and the other thing i says um right on the page you give me the watchtower yeah. claims that jehovah witnesses will be the only ones to survive armageddon yeah, exactly. and when we know the Bible says that um, when Jesus returns, um, you know, not I don't I don't believe in pre-tribulation rapture. I'm talking about when he returns after the tribulation. He says in Matthew 24 that he's going to gather his elect from the four winds of the earth, and also you know the, the dead in Christ too. First, then us, and uh, so then after that time again, that's when uh, God goes to war literally with all the evil that's left on this planet. So, uh, so if the Jehovah knew the Bible, they would know that yeah, we're not going to be here for that. You know, that, that Armageddon, the battle of Armageddon, that's going to uh -huh. be when uh, the Lord slays all the evil. 
Yeah, yes. and then uh, so um, yeah, hopefully nobody's there for that. You know, what I mean, I, I pray that nobody will be there for the the wicked that's going to be slayed on this planet. And yes. if you are here for it, you got to be one of those ones slayed. You know, what I mean, and uh, so um, it's kind of a contradiction what they do. You know, and I'm glad this website you gave me it points out a lot of the contradictions and you know false mm -hmm. prophecies. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I've been I've been to uh, gather when I used to go to a body that I used to go to a church. Um, they would literally, I mean, it would come down to the conclusion. It would, in some cases, in shape or form, it was literally suppressing the Holy Spirit because, I mean, like, I'm I'm all fired up, you know, like, talking, asking questions, and they would shut me down. It was like, and it's the same kind of narrative what y'all are talking about with this. If you really think about it, it's the same, it's the same spin on it. It's like, hey, you got to come to us for all the answers. But the Bible says, trust no man. You know, read, like, like uh, Dan was saying earlier, study yourself to be approved and yeah. really understand and embed it and, and, and you know, chew on it like literally meditate on it. understand what you're reading and, and write it on your heart and and let the holy spirit guide you this stuff is a defilement and a beguiling in my opinion i think um whenever you say new light new light well mm. jesus is the light of the world uh was it uh mm. psalms 19 105 i think it's talking about i'm gonna paraphrase let me see if i can pull it up uh, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and the light yeah. into my path mm. um and then there's all kinds. Isaiah 60, verse 1, uh, Arise, shine, for the light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. I mean, you look into uh, John 8, 12, Then speak Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the wor world. He that follow me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of the light. Of the life. And uh, just to me, that one thing, it's very... It, it's causing people to stumble. So we're talking about no life at all existing after that. There's no afterlife. So you're basically, if my interpretation is understanding this, do they say hell is on earth? Is that correct, Tony? Well, they say hell is you're six feet under. It's okay. The grave of mankind. Yeah, common grave. Okay. So, so it's technically here, I guess. Yeah. I guess. So basically, yeah, like the ground that you're buried on, on or whatever state of or condition that you are in your death state, whether it be in the belly of a well or whatever, whether it be, you know, in some dirt or whatever, ashes or whatever, uh, like an urn, that's your that's your hell. So so okay, so they talk do they ever mention Abraham's bosom? Do they ever talk about, yes. you know, my paradise, right? So if you're a Jehovah Witness, you know, these questions would come up and say, Well, what about, you know, like we was talking about before the broadcast, you know, Jehovah Witnesses to resurrect on the paradise earth. So that's what you're referring to six yes. feet down to the ground. Yeah. So, and then, you know, and un, un, unrighteous, you know, I was talking about this earlier, res, uh, resurrected to paradise earth. Anyway, what did Jesus achieve? So this is the mindset of what Jehovah witnesses would say. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of question, uh, you know, then they, you know, what is your all's take on that? I mean, we kind of touched base on it really anyways, but then, you know, what about eternal life? You know, it's kind of interesting that they say Jesus would be Michael, that if he goes to heaven, so I guess, are you not worthy of heaven? Because you, because you, basically what we're talking about here, you're six feet under and you're just, there's no existence outside the paradigm of what you live in. No, so only the 144,000 go to heaven. Yeah. The rest of us, uh, live on earth. They, they will be on a paradise earth, earth yeah. that after the great tribulation and Armageddon, Armageddon. then we... Uh, go in and basically bring the earth back to this paradise, paradise state. Yeah. 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 So that's yeah. the teaching. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that's, mm, these, mm. yeah. See, so there's a two class. There's two classes that they have. One is the, uh, the little flock. And those are those who are consistent of the anointed who are those who are, who will be Kings and priests with, Christ in heaven, and they believe that these are numbered uh, of only 144,000. So, right now, about now, all those seats are taken. Yes. Okay. So, anyone else who is a Jehovah's Witness, uh, they believe that their uh, inheritance would be here on earth, that yes. they're basically that, uh, you know, as long as they remain faithful to God, uh, they're going to be able to, uh, once the Great Tribulation Armageddon happens, they'll. Go, they'll walk on into uh, the new system of things, those who are left remaining. Mm -hmm. And they were basically uh, cause, you know, once at that time, God would have cleansed the earth of all the ungodly and the wickedness. Yes. And now those ones, that great crowd, as it were, would have a job to do, which is cl uh, cleaning up all, you know, picking up all the bones. I don't want to get too graphic, but, you know, they would be transforming that 
the planet back into the paradise conditions that Adam and Eve had lost because they believed that Adam and Eve's job was to, you know, they were placed in the Garden of Eden. They considered that to be paradise and that they were supposed to spread that across the planet or the plane. OK. Mm -hmm. And so basically uh, that hasn't happened. God's purpose must be fulfilled. So therefore, he's just going about it a different way through this great crowd. Now, this great crowd, once they uh, walk through the great tribulation and once they have that, I mean, uh, this will usher in the thousand year reign of Christ. Yeah. Is what they believe. And then the, the, the unrighteous will so slowly be resurrected. So that we could teach them. Yeah, teach them. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> to, they have a teaching to, campaign. Yeah, a teaching campaign, basically. Yeah, yeah. So, like, for instance, the in, uh, people would say, how about the Native Americans? They haven't heard the gospel. Okay, well, these ones will be resurrected. And now we, as sure was witnesses, will have the opportunity to preach to them once they're resurrected. So there'll be a gradual resurrecting of people back to, you know, mm -hmm. uh, on the planet. And so, therefore, not all at once. But as you know, time goes on, you know, it'd be more and more would be resurrected. Yeah. And they would always say, you know, perhaps those uh, patriarchs like uh, Abraham and them, and they'd be some of the first ones because they were closer to perfection. Yes. You mm. know, but, and you but so with all that being said, the thousand year reign of Christ is to basically to teach everybody, to bring everybody back into perfect condition, you know, like, uh, to become perfect, you know, to get all the, to, I guess, to teach all the sin out of you. I'm just going to say it like that. <laughs> and so then, one, yeah. And so once that happens, Satan will be re uh, released out of, uh, you know, I guess wherever that he's at to test mankind again. And then if you pass that test, then you have everlasting life. Yes. But, oh. but during that thousand year reign, you can slip up and, you know, uh, you might, they might have an investigation to say, Hey, Where's Bob or whatever? Uh, hey, I guess Bob's sin because we see his bones. Well, we see his clothes here. I guess the ground must have opened up and swallowed him whole because yeah, he's no longer here. Yeah, he's no longer here <laughs> because he must have did something unfaithful. Yes. So, I mean, so that's just their thinking. Yes. So I'm hearing purgatory also. Like I'm hearing yes. like a spin, like it's almost like a yeah, holding like stuff. a mirror of purgatory. It's almost yes. like mirroring the purgatory narrative. That's that's I mean, that's why I'm I'm just listening to y'all talk. Yeah. That's what that it sounds all jacked up, man. It sounds like they yeah. have no direction, like yeah, and it sounds like twins, uh, twin earths, too. It almost sounds yeah. like there's an earth that's going to be destroyed and the other one's going to be changed, and you're going to be you know, you're going <laughs> to dust the bones back off. The angels are going to come clean it up, then you're going to be popping back up like weeds, you're going to get yeah. taught again, and almost. Kind of sounds like a little reincarnation kind of narrative going on a little bit, yeah. a little yes. spin. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's all kinds of listen. The author, listen, the father is not the author of confusion. Mm. So when you look at the scripture, the scriptures are the simplicity, the simplicity of Jesus Christ, and it's baffling my mind. It's like, you know, we got to do this. We're gonna go through different. You know, we're gonna have the judges. The elders are gonna come back around, show mm. us how to do it, how to how to yeah. live a better life, and how to get this dirty old sin out of us. I mean, it's it's insane. And yes. then all you know the simplicity of Jesus Christ going on to Golgotha at Calvary, paid the sin debt for all mankind, and um, you know, poured blood out of his body, redeemed us from this wicked, old, crazy, wacky world. Mm -hmm. And this sounds like you know, getting back on a personal level, it had to have been hard to walk away and then walk back in, especially the time that y'all walked away from it you know, 2020 ish, you know, and all that. And then, you know, walking this thing out with Messiah and Jesus Christ, you know, we're really honing in on the scriptures and waking up to realization that you've been lied to and you, the Holy ghost was driving you all in this, you know, this, this narrow path has probably been very hard to hear a bunch of commentary and, you know, a bunch of sarcasm, you know, man's hearts are continually wicked. They're wicked. So they, they make comments. They, you know, they, bash your name and all these different things it's probably very heartbreaking i get it and uh you know I, you know i love you both and uh, i know that it uh takes a lot of faith to keep on you know hearing all the persecution and getting ridiculed and all that and uh bashed to to death that you're not going to be one of the 144,000 you know what i'm saying or or whatever or whatever the narrative is i just wanted to say that one thing there was a there was a few things that happened but the one thing that just tore me all to pieces 
was when Tony and I realized when we would go to the memorial every year, how we would just let that bread and wine pass us by and we did not partake. And we realized, wow, we are denying Christ. Christ. We rejected and it was like a black man. Yeah, I, I tell you that I, I cried a lot yeah. because I could not believe it. And I just prayed and ask for forgiveness because I just did not know. I didn't get it. It was like, yeah. you know, my eyes were really blinded and I couldn't yeah. see it. Yeah. Because see, they, they believe that only the 144,000 or those who are in that, who go to heaven are in a covenant relationship with Jesus. So everyone else, they can benefit from that ransom, but that covenant is with that 144,000 or those who are uh, left remaining on earth because they don't believe that everybody on earth, I mean, that there's 144,000 right now on earth who had that heavenly hope, but there's a small group of them, you know, right now. And then out of that group, there's this group of men called the faithfulness Greek slave that they, that is their governing body. It's almost like, a, I think eight popes, eight men who rule over them and tell them, Give them their rules, their bylaws, their yes. doctrines or whatever. And, uh, you know, I mean, these men, uh, I mean, matter of fact, one of them had just, well, one got removed not too long ago. And uh, we seen a video on him. Uh, they caught him, I think, buying a whole lot of liquor. In a yeah, liquor he was store. buying a lot of scotch. Yeah, somebody... on a day that they tell us to go out and house to house and door knocking. Well, he's out there going and buying some very expensive scotch. I mean, whole yeah shopping cart of this yeah stuff. he had a whole shopping cart yeah so i guess it finally got i think it finally caught up to him and i guess they had from my understanding they actually moved him i think it got too much publicity too much heat so they had to get rid of him mm. so, yeah yeah well mm -hmm. one main enemy for them was this this yeah. uh this pandemic uh because you know when you're shut in you don't do anything but you're on your phone you're yeah. on the internet yeah so the internet has really been the enemy you know because people have just been looking up stuff so yeah. i or imagine there's been their a, feed yeah yeah so because i imagine some, it's been a great falling away yeah yeah mm. it has so i mean so in actuality though uh really for us i mean for me personally i was waking up kind uh before uh this pandemic you know situation and I had a nephew, uh, he, he had woken up, uh, had waken up right before he was telling me, Tony, you're one of the smartest guys. I know you're always looking into things what well, you need to check this out, but see, we're trained as Jehovah's witnesses. You better not look that stuff up because mm -hmm. it's an apostate. Yes. And it's almost like you're actually, uh, getting in contact with the devil or a demon, you know, on the other mm -hmm. side. Mm -hmm. So when you, so I mean, kid you not, when I would first come across things, your heart's racing, you're breathing hard. You just almost had this feel like you want to look over your shoulder. Yeah, your palms are sweaty. Yeah, your palms are sweaty. <laughs> your heart's pounding. That's how people get when they challenge this or you know, you know, challenge the organization because they're just programmed that way. Mm -hmm. And but what was so, I just thank God um, how He's helped me is because I always had a desire to just to know truth and i remember i used to pray to god about you know about i would say god i want to just know what's going on in this world you know why i mean uh you know just expose things to me and god has actually showed me that the whole world is lying in the power of the wicked thing i mean sorry the wicked one rather yes. mm -hmm. and so <laughs> and then later on i said you know what i never prayed about you exposing this organization right or wrong and when i prayed that prayer god is slowly and comfort and you know gently exposed things to me because you know there was other i want to say conspiracy uh you know uh conspiracy things that i would look into and then some of these people who i would follow they wouldn't be talking about the subject matter wasn't Jehovah's witnesses but they'll throw that in there mm -hmm. You know, and that's say Charles says Russell and, you know, and, you know, and and connect them with, you know, some type of false prediction or the, the you know, the Masons or the Masonic, you know, order or whatever. And then so then I was like, that's when I had that prayer and God has just opened my eyes to all this stuff that was going on with them. And so I took that leap of faith 
and uh, I'm not looking back. So, of course, it's it's bittersweet because, like I say, I have loved ones, um, you know, uh, uh, my kids, uh, you know, on their mother's side. She's no longer with us. Uh, I love them, you know, um, and so but, you know, and then it's some friends. I have some strong friendships with people. Some on me, you know, uh, many years with these people and I had to just turn my back on that. You know, mm. or they really turn their back on me because I didn't turn my back on them. Yes. And, you know, they yeah. turned on me. Yeah, they so, wouldn't yeah. listen. Yeah. You know. Mm. Well, you're not you're not coming off as a com- in a conflicted spirit. You're just uh, praying for them, and then you're yes worried about their walk and your mm-hmm. work because you know that the scales have been taken off your eyes, and you're praying that one day that they come to the realization right. that that what you know today. So you know, and uh, you're doing your job too because Ephesians five says expose the deeds of evil. Exactly. Know the enemy mm-hmm. and expose them, and that's what you guys yeah. are doing. And it sounds like a tradition to me, man. And uh, it's like, because uh, I, I study all these, um, you know, religions, cults, and uh, secret societies and all that. So the first thing I, used to, I learned to do over the years is go, go to the founder. Who was the founder? What did he do? What did she do? And that's where you get the meat and potatoes of each religion. And uh, later on, I can get into that later of uh, who Charles Taste Russell really was and all that stuff. And uh, a lot of similarities to Joseph Smith and these other clowns out there, Alistair Crowley and all that. So, uh, but um, it just sounds like, uh, you know, because a tradition of man, uh, when Jesus warned us, don't follow traditions of men, uh, follow God. You know what I mean? And uh, traditions of men include these religions and cults. And how it is, too, is like, um, thank God you guys are only a first generation because second, third generation, your parents back, you know what? You have to be a Catholic. You have to be a Jehovah Witness. You have to be a Mormon because you're grandparents where I were so we have to keep that tradition going and that's what the churches do they lock you in by tradition yeah. mm-hmm. and, and, uh, you know Dan um, when Tony and I left my daughter I have a um, a 31 year old daughter she was still in hmm. so you know that was another thing that was just tearing me all to pieces yeah. because I was bashing myself like, oh my goodness, I, got her I have gotten her into this cult, yeah. and I'm out now. I have to pray to the Father to help me yeah. some type of way to get her out of there because when um, the organization when they found out that we had left, they actually contacted my daughter yeah. and told her. You I need to make a decision. Start shunning. You know, you need to start shunning your mom and yeah. her husband. Mm. Yeah. The end. Oh, my goodness. You know, so, I mean, slowly, you know, I would feed her, mm. you know, different things. She never mm. stopped uh, shunning me, uh, me and my husband. She's yeah. had to shun me before when I was in and I got this fellowship. And that was the hardest, one of the hardest times in my life. Mm that I could not be around my daughter. I used to go to Zumba classes and we would look at each other, but she didn't, she couldn't say anything to me. Mm. You know, um, we both cried. We would look at each other with tears flowing because we wanted to hug each other so bad and we couldn't do it. Yes. So, you know, with the father's help, yeah. Mm. Um, she was listening and she defi- finally decided to leave. Yeah. And that was a big relief yeah. for me. Yeah. And I was so grateful that, you know, the father looked out and helped me to get her out because yeah. it, that was and be, rough. Yeah. And because, like I say, uh, I was um, gently feeding Donna some things and just asking her point of view, but showing her. And see, that's the thing. You have to have that warning. I mean, to once you see the truth, what are you going to do with it? Mm. So when me and Donna will have our Bible readings and we'll, so I say, well, what do you think about this? You know, let's say for instance, with the, uh, with the memorial or the communion, as we would call it, you know, mm. Christians would call it. I said, now the, uh, in the old Testament, when someone came a uh, proselyte or became part of the nation of, uh, say Israel, everyone partook of that. Everyone had, I mean, he didn't say that some had to follow the Passover and, you know, but if you was like a foreigner, you were not to follow it. That's, uh, but everyone had to, you know? And so when I worded things in such a way like that, it was more, you know, uh, you know, it was gentle. And then we did the same thing with her daughter, you know, just feeding her a little information. And one of the things that really got her and got my wife as well is that when we seen one of those uh, governing body members, one of those 
faithful and discreet slave. Well, you know, uh, members, the faithful and discreet slave class guys that they coined themselves as. When we seen them, they had this royal commission in Australia. Australia because, royal commission. Yeah, and because Jehovah's Witnesses have a very just like a lot of Christian or well Catholics with the pedophilia. Jehovah's Witnesses have that same thing going on. It just permeated that organization. And but what's so weird about them? They did not want you to go to the authorities because they felt like it would bring reproach or shame on Jehovah's name. So they would try to handle everything in house. And so basically, uh, I guess in Australia, they kind of call them to the carpet on that and uh asked them about uh them being inspired uh what inspired donna well they and asked uh something. they just lied constantly about a lot of things and we and so she was able to see the guy lying i mean saying one thing to us well they they i th believe they asked him did he think that, that the Jehovah's yeah. witnesses were the only mm. organization yeah, that that's god it. uses yeah today um uh, today and he said <laughs> Uh, that that be, member that that, that, that that would be quite presumptuous. Well, preposterous. No, he said yeah. presumptuous. Yeah, 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 right. And I, I was that was yeah. one of the breaking things for me. I was like, oh, wait a minute, but you all say that that is the truth. So yeah, you, the truth. you 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 didn't say what a resounding yes. You know, you said that would be quite presumptuous, and I was like, okay, something is wrong here, and yeah. and uh, I, I don't like it. I don't yeah. like it. So, so that was yeah. one of the things. Yeah. So yeah. we showed her that. So, I mean, gently, you know, she's just showing her little things here and there. She was able to see that what we were telling her. Uh, and we said, we said, uh, you know, that everything that uh, everything that we're showing you is legitimate. It's truthful. And she was able to say, yes, do your, own, do your own research. And I, heard, I said, do your research. I said, pray about it. Because yes. my whole thing was, and I always believe this. Even when I became a Jehovah's Witness back then, I, this thing, uh, when I used to belong to a church years ago or go to a church, I didn't hardly pay attention. But this always stuck with me, what this pastor said. He said, don't believe it because I said it. Look it up for yourself. Mm. That's always been there in the back of my mind. And so mm. I took that leap of faith right on, you know, with Jehovah's Witnesses. Started to look up things as it was, you know, I was sitting at the meetings and they will be going over like a talk or certain things. And I just said, this is not truthful. Hmm. I had to walk out. Yeah. There was, and the thing there is, nobody, nobody that tells the truth is going to tell you, just listen to me. Like we do all the time here on the show, man. We tell people we want you, we encourage you, and we push you to challenge what we say. You know, and go read it for yourself. I do a Bible studies video, one chapter at a time, whatever the case, and a little Bible series there. And um, after, uh, uh, you know, when I'm done with the, the chapter, whatever, I tell people, I don't want you to listen to me or anybody. Go read this for yourself and, you know, let me know what you get out of it. And, uh, and the thing is, the dictator is never going to tell you that. Or, uh, you know, these religions, I was like, yo, do as I say, not as yeah. I do, basically. Do as I say, and that's it. You know, that's mm -hmm. not what the Bible's about. Bible mm -hmm. wants you to, like we said earlier, they want you to challenge it to so you know within your heart and your mind that this is true. And if you do challenge the Bible, like um, all the, the accounts in the Bible, you're going to, you know, go through history and everything else. Like, the, you know, not jumping off the subject, but the, the Great Flood, the Giants and Nephilim, all that. And yes. you could challenge that. You, you could use real world history. Uh, all hundreds of ancient cultures all talked about those three same things, except they had little variations of different names or whatever, but they're there. You know what I mean? And, uh, so everything in the Bible can be challenged and proven. You know, the, like the Bible says, it's ready for reproof. And yes. uh, so... You yeah, know, and then like, also, you, I'm go sorry, ahead, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. <laughs> I'm just saying this goes along. I think it's Galatians uh, chapter 6, verse 3. I think it's, uh, for if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, mm. he deceiveth himself. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, it's, and then Psalms 118.8, uh, it's better to trust in the Lord than put confidence in man. So, you know, we're not during this broadcast, we're not here to bash this organization of Jehovah witness. We're not here to bash. We're just here to the, the two on here that are uh, telling the testimony about the pain, the hurt that has been caused after they, when the, in all the discord that was involved there, you, you could hear it. If you go back and rewind in, in that part, and that should not be, that should not tear a mother or a, you know, a, a daughter, a child. And then all this discord, husbands, wives, whatever, it should not be changing perspective how you can't speak tongue and all this stuff because you you know they're and then another thing 
if you go to the scriptures, it's talking about honoring your mother and father. I mean, if a man has to dictate, it, it, like Dan said, it's a dictator. It's a dictatorship at the end of the day, yeah. and it's very heartbreaking. I mean, and that's you know, we're not trying to put down an organization or or a corporation. Hello, but yeah. um, but well, uh, I mean, um, no, it you shouldn't know, not- be that way. The people, like we, when you expose the Catholics and the Mormons and all that, it's that mm-hmm. if you're a Jehovah's Witness out there right now, we are not targeting you by all means. We love you. We wish you come to the cross. We are targeting the people at the very top that know the difference. We're targeting, yeah. which he's dead now, Charles Tate Russell. We're targeting those people. Those people are pure evil. That yeah. man, yeah. you manipulate you, deceive you, worked off your emotions, all that stuff. And yeah. when you... um um. Uh, you know, I can't even say a name, but man, when you uh, mentioned that um, they told you to shun your mother, uh, you know, they, I'm sorry, they told your daughter to shun you. That's yeah. a fifth commandment violation on your Absolutely. father and mother. You know, it's uh, mm-hmm. so yeah. they just violate the fifth commandment by doing that. You know, it's uh, it's crazy. You know, because Brian brought that up. I'm like, yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's a, you know, yeah. but, well, you know what? I was just thinking about something else that uh, that really got me really thinking. Um, it was um, Matthew's 19, uh, Matthew's 28, verse 19. Now, I'm saying that because, Brian, we met um, your wife and your kids um, at the Puritan barn. We, yeah, we, got um, <clears throat> we got baptized. And I was just thinking that when I got baptized as Jehovah's Witness, it wasn't in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, because uh, Matthew's uh, 28 verse 19 says, go you or go ye therefore and teach all nation, nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. We was not baptized like that. We were baptized in the name of Jehovah. And I think they even brought up the organization. Yeah, the organization. As if there's no Jesus yeah. Christ or Holy Ghost. Yeah, well, they added themselves mm-hmm. in there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They put them, yeah. they inserted themselves right up there. Yeah, with right God. in that scripture. Yeah. Right yeah. in that scripture. Yeah. yeah. So and, I guess I guess that's why they say Jesus is Michael when he ascends to, to heaven. I mean, I guess well, they they're yeah. in I mean, literally that they're it's it's this is where we're at everybody yeah with the with all the cultures all the different i mean there's all kinds of wicked i mean was it ephesians 5 ephesians 6 we got wickedness all over the place and dominion there's all kinds of and high places i mean we're touching base on that on spiritual warfare friday night these two that have uh, come on here to throw out their testimony and and uh and it's a heartfelt testimony it's uh i know them i personally know them so it's kind of just listening to it and have this conversation, it's uh, very heartfelt and um, it's genuine. And uh, it's just uh, for somebody to, this is just where we are. Uh, men's hearts have been waxing colder and colder. And when you have to be baptized by a corporation or a, a complex or whatever type of you know entity or whatever you want to call it, just to, and then you you uh, you basically don't even say Jesus's name or anything. That's scary to me. Yeah, and that's why we're having this. That's why we're having this broadcast tonight. Yeah. I think that's oh, congratulations so congratulations on um the baptism at the barn, guys. Yeah, yes, thank I just you. got baptized yeah. uh, a few weeks ago uh, up at the barn. I was down there in Indiana for uh, the Passover, and um, I got baptized by uh, uh, David Carrico and uh, Josh. Yeah, well, uh, praise God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was uh David and uh, David and John Pounders. Yeah, they oh, baptized. Nice. That's awesome. Me, my wife, and my wife's daughter, and my daughter. Yeah, so it was, it was four, actually of, four us. of us. Yeah, yeah. The, the, yeah. We all, as a family, got baptized because I was telling Tony. I said, Tony, yeah, we got to get baptized. We have to get the right baptized way. the right way. We cannot mm-hmm. stay up underneath what we're under. I said we have to get baptized. So uh, uh, that's what uh, David did for me. Possible. He made it possible. Yeah. And we're so happy now. That's um, awesome. Mm-hmm. That's what David said to me. You first of all, he asked me, "Do I denounce Satan?" I'm like, "Yes." Do you yes. accept Jesus Christ? I'm like, "Yes." And um, then he asked me and he said, "I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost." That's exactly what he said. That's right. And, that's uh, right. That's awesome. Yeah. Yes, it is. My brother's yeah. next. Uh, they're gonna be coming down. We're supposed to do a meet and greet in June next month here. We're out in here, Rhode Island. So uh, when they come down to this way to Rhode Island, uh, we get my brother baptized here. Because both of us were baptized as kids in the Catholic Church, but we don't count that. <laughs> yeah, and we were baptized again as teenagers in the Baptist Church, and uh, we didn't know what it meant. You know what I mean? And so uh, this is like uh, the proper way because now we both know what it means, and it's uh, more yeah. special. Yes, yes. yes. Uh-huh. 
Yeah, yep. it's um, when we talk, I think it's Ephesians two verse eight. Uh, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. I mean, we're talking about salvation here through Jesus Christ, and um, it's just like it, I'm so thankful that y'all got baptized, Dan. You yeah. too, yes. and the to be born again and to be really truly born again and literally understand what that means and all the stuff that goes along with it. There's a lot to be, there's a lot to be praising. I mean, literally it's nothing but a miracle, especially after this testimony and all the stuff that y'all been beat up and spit out. I hate to use that terminology, but beat up, spit out and thrown to the wolves, so to speak. And then, there you, like. yeah, yeah, I'm hearing you. I'm hearing it. <laughs> I tell you, uh, uh, Brian, when I, when I got this fellowship, uh, you know, uh, when one one comes to the the elders and yeah, just uh, tell them what yeah, tell, tell them actually what happened. Yeah, so and you have to tell them what happened, and you have three men, and you know, me as a woman in there, you know, I tell them what happened, and they're asking me why it happened, who seen it first of all, and this, you know, just going into these other things. But the thing that really broke me down is when they left the room and said, okay, well, we're going to go and deliberate. pray and deliberate. And they came back and they said, well, we're just going to, we're the, uh, we're giving you over to Satan yeah, they, now. Yeah. They've <laughs> never I, said that. Yeah. And I'm just, like, I'm repentant, yeah, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm no longer doing what it is that yeah. got me into the trouble. I realized yeah. I was wrong, but to say that yeah. I've been handed over to Satan, yeah. that was one of the worst feelings in yeah. the world and see i never knew that they believed that way because i used to hear things like that that they would disfellowship people for i would say no apparent reason but they said to me no well you know they've they're unrepentant but now their unrepentance means that if you commit a sin let's say once or twice okay and you come and tell them then that's to in our, in our mindset you repentant but if you repeatedly done it over and over again, let's say it lasted like a month, a year, or whatever, and you come to them, oh, we got to disfellowship you. Yeah. You know, so so you're spiritually make... sick. So they liken it to, <laughs> well, you know, you're almost like you got this, uh, you know, this kufi, whatever, juice, and uh, we got to isolate you from everybody else, like you got a mm. uh, like plague or something. Yes. And so, and they keep you out there for like a year. You've been in fellowship, you, you know, uh, you can sit there and you know, taking information, you can sing the song, but no one's going to talk mm -hmm. to you. Go I used to a, sit in the back room yeah. of the kingdom yeah, hall. Yeah, sit in the back. <laughs> you couldn't, I couldn't sit up front. Yeah, I had to sit in the front, back and the I back. had to leave before so, the meeting was over. Yeah. I couldn't like talk to anybody. Nobody would talk to yeah. me. <laughs> so, yeah. So it was crazy to find out. They literally put, I mean, they have in their literature, cause they have us, the elders got their own separate book. It's like they have their own secret book that uh, kind of how to follow Jehovah's Witness procedures when it comes to certain what, what they call it theocratic things, even uh, when uh, judicial decisions, what they consider like when a person does what they consider to be seriously uh, like serious sins. And if a person, I mean, there's I mean, like you do it so many times, you you will be this fellowship. Now, that works for most people. But if you are one of those favorite, I mean, you know, like when those favorite families, you know, like when those. Uh, families that's kind of in a special, what do you call it, Donna? Uh, situation, you know, that you're like, place yeah, all. you know, certain people, certain ones, they can, you know, that this fellowship it may only last about six months. Or they just might know? reprove them. Or just might reprove them, you know. Yeah, you can't some comment at the reprove, meetings or something like that. But, but <laughs> most people, you know, it's, oh, no, well, we got to just fellowship you because you've you done it too many times. But you can be saying, like, I come to you as a brother or a sister. I, I know I'm weak. I need help. Pray over me, help me, but no, we got to just fellowship you. We gonna throw some scriptures out mm -hmm. there, yeah, and you can listen. So that's gonna help you. So it's basically like you got to help yourself to get back right. Matter of fact, before a person becomes a Jehovah's Witness, you have to have the uh, you have to have changed your life around. I mean, they actually put the cart before the horse. You got to clean yourself up before you get baptized. Yes, and you wow. have. Yeah. Then they'll ask you fifty, yeah, about or no, hundred questions, yeah, about yeah, over about hundred questions <laughs> yeah. about the organization, yeah, and yeah. then you you know be, uh, you can be approved for yeah. baptism. But yeah. let's say hypothetically, uh, hypothetically, because Jehovah's Witnesses they don't have beards, 
if a person had a beard, you more likely wouldn't get baptized. They don't, you more likely couldn't go out into the ministry as a witness because you have uh, facial hair, even though like the God is put it on your face. I mean, you know, that's, you know, it just grows naturally on your face. It's just their image, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, I know like a lot of people, they focus on Charles Taylor Russell. Now, he was the first president and a lot of things came from him, but I think, uh, the second one, uh, Rutherford, is where a lot of the things, how Jehovah's Witnesses, their procedures came through him. He was the lawyer, and he kind of circumvented a lot of Charles Taze Russell things, and therefore they had a splinter group. And there was, I think the Bible students actually continued to take Charles T uh, Taze Russell's teachings, and they're still, out there, uh, they're still out there to this very day. But um, J.F. Rutherford is the one that Really, a lot of the teachings of Joe's witnesses come from him. Yeah, it's just uh, oh, it's confusing. It's, it's yeah, confusing. I mean, yeah, it's it's my it's my yeah mass confusion twenty four seven. It seems like, <laughs> and like I said, that there's no there's no uh, unity. There's no it's there's discord flying out every which way, and that's yeah. that's um that brings another scripture to mind. Uh, Second Timothy chapter three, uh, 13 is the verse, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Uh, exactly. Verse four, verse, verse 14, but, con but continue thou in the things which thou has learned and has been assured of knowing of whom has learned them. And then 15 and that from a child thou has known the Holy scriptures, yes. which are able to make thee wise into salvation through faith, which is in Jesus Christ or Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. And and all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and instruction for righteousness, that man of that the man of God may be perfect through fin uh, furnished unto all good works. Mm -hmm. yes. And uh, that's where we are. I mean, this is. I mean, here's the thing: How can a man take it upon himself as saying he is of a godlike nature? Because if you think, well, I'm of a superior authority. You know, you're saying, okay, I am the Gilbert Ream. I am the one with all the knowledge. I am. So, you know, you hear that I am stuff. So then that's not good because that's, a, you know, I am the Alpha, the Omega. That's what Jesus, that's what we're talking about in the scripture and revelation and everything. That's so when you start saying that stuff, there's a lot of, you can take a deep study in that, but that I am stuff is very scary. Uh, mm -hmm. When you, when a man takes it or a man or woman takes it upon themselves to say they have authority. Yes. Right. Jesus, Jesus is the head. Jesus is the the literally the authority over you. Yeah. Not uh not somebody that has took upon a titlement or or making themselves feel entitled, and then thinking that they are of a superior authority, which is very. It's. I mean, I don't even know how you even go there. It, it's just like anything else. I mean, I've worked when I used to work before I got hurt. People would literally use the word Jesus. Don't you love Jesus? You need to work harder. Don't you do this? I love Jesus. All this stuff you hear, words of Jesus, the the name, you know, thrown around real loosely, just to get you to work. I mean, that's just that's it's really weird. It's the same concept. Don't you want to be this or you know, like in the Jehovah Witness here narrative? But you know, you have to do these certain things to live up to the t uh, the expectations of what we have been given in this corporation to be able to get into the hundred forty four thousand whatever rank or whatever it is when we have to be six feet down under the ground and maybe one day we'll be worthy enough to be cleansed of this art this old dirty sinful flesh and. You know, you'll be able on the new earth or whatever. I mean, it's 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 it, it it contradicts it contradicts the scriptures. It contradicts Jesus's words, the parables, the sweet red letters of Jesus Christ. It is like it's blowing my mind. It's it, it's it's blasting this. It's it's a, anybody you know. I mean, and then when you're in this for so long, indoctrinated, and that's what a lot of people are with these televisions. So it's indoctrination on the highest order, and you don't know where to turn to. So if somebody doesn't reach out and say, hey, here you go, you know, whoever you are, your name, Bob, John, whoever, and you need to, here's, here's all the, everything, you're not in bondage to man, you're free in Christ. Here's the, here's the instruction manual. Here's the Holy Scriptures. Yes. And um, when you don't have that, but God, was it, uh, I can't remember how we use that term, but anyways, when you don't have the love and the mercy and that intent in your heart to spread the gospel, and then you have this other stuff, this wacky theology over here i don't even know what what they're trying to say but i mean i have 
the stuff that you all are presenting tonight, I have heard in other bodies and other uh, denominations, which I uh, have set on. And it's like, you got to do this. You got to do this. Here's the New Testament church. Here's the documentation. And it's not a it's not a, a multiple choice or, you know, like a questionnaire. But it's literally like, you know, 400 pages worth of this is why we are a New Testament church. And they slap it on there and it's like a big paperweight. And, you know, darn well, the attention span of anybody in this reality, you ain't going to read through the first four or five pages. You're going to get tore off pieces and walk on. The point is, is they have their own, it's their own doctrine. I mean, it has, it comes down to it. You're taking and adding and subtracting. It's crazy. They call it the silver sword. Actually, they have their own Bible now. Yes, called the silver sword. And they've actually, now organization is nowhere to be found in the Bible, but they inserted it there. They've actually inserted themselves there. So, yeah. yeah, Yes. And you well, know I mean, what Revelation says, those who take away, add, or whatever the, to the word, yeah, uh, yeah the, the curse is uh, going to be upon them. And I would not want to be them, that's for sure. Especially those clowns who wrote those things and all that, the Watchtower and everything. Yeah. And uh, yeah, uh, it's the same thing with the Book of Mormon, same thing with the Catechism, same thing yes. with the Quran. We could go on and on. But I mean, like, these are doctrines of men and devils. This is exactly yes. what they are. Yes. Mm-hmm. And uh, um, as Brian is quoting these scriptures and you have been quoting scriptures my wife as well that's what really will wake an individual up or keep mm-hmm. them out of that situation because i was ignorant to i mean i didn't know the, you know what the bible actually said when i had was introduced to jehovah's witnesses and i know a lot of people just looking back at people who had bible studies a lot of them do not know the scriptures yeah so that's why it's important for us to you know uh preach the word give the word and stay in God's word That's right. so that we can resist such things. Because uh, like I say, because we do see now when I look at the world, how it's structured in some ways, I see how Jehovah's Witnesses play for people. The world does the exact same thing. As you say that there's a spiritual deception that's not only in Jehovah's Witnesses, but really in almost everything that I've seen, like I said, uh, God has showed me in first John five nineteen. Mm-hmm. The whole world lies in the power of the wicked one. And as he has cunningly deceived Eve, he's done the same thing to the masses as well. So, yeah, we have to to come to spiritual light of truth and God's word. And that's what's going to help us to keep on that straight and narrow path. Amen to that. And that's what, you know, it's all about, you know, being on a straight and narrow path. And, and you know, you, you look at it, right? So when you grasp that, the concept of that, when it says only, you know, the the path is straight and narrow, only few will enter. Why is the gate of destruction, right? And you got all the world's religions out there, all of them. Uh, even, uh, you know, the Jehovah's Mormons, they all confirm under the Pope. You know what I mean? They all confirm to this one world religion to say we all serve the same God. But however, they contradict themselves by saying uh, only Jehovah's are saved too. But it's, a you know, the whole thing is all religion. It's all a contradiction. It's a contradiction to, to, to right. themselves in the Bible, you know. So, and they'll do is um, they'll cherry pick, and I know it's every religion, right? They will cherry pick the Bible, right? They'll cherry yeah. pick it, and here's the, the contradiction of what they do, right? They'll cherry pick the Bible, right? Then they'll say, well, the Watchtower is the only doctrine to go by. And yes. because the Bible's not really true, but, and I'm like, hold on, let me stop you right there. Like, you know, Islam does the same thing, Mormons and everybody else. Right? So hold on one second. You guys sat there and defending your faith, right, with the Bible, but now you tell me the Bible is full of poop? So if that's the case, then your religion's full of poop because how do you cherry pick the Bible then later on bash the very Bible that you use to defend yourself? And then, and by the way, the verses were way out of context, of course. Um, and I was talking to you guys earlier before the show. I used to work with this, um, um, you know, Jehovah Witness, uh, sweet lady. I did security with her, right? Third shift security. And uh-huh. uh, she was there like a uh, half hour before I left. I mean, before she left, I mean. And uh, she was a rover, whatever the case. But anyway, uh, she was trying to get me into Mormon, I mean, uh, Jehovah Witnesses, right? And um, then we had a discussion about it. And and she goes, well, if nobody dies, you know, goes to hell when they die, you know. And now that's like, well, why, where does it say that? Well, Watchtower says that. So I don't care what the Watchtower says. No offense. What, it, does, it doesn't say no such thing in the Bible. She goes, oh, yes, it does. Because the Watchtower quotes the Bible, right? She gave me this verse. The First of all, the, number one, the verse didn't even sound like anything they were trying to make it sound like. And number two, and I read it, I'm like, all right. So I said, could you do me a favor, read this verse out loud and re- keep reading to two verses after this. She is okay. So she reads it out loud, her mouth dropped because it clearly said the second death is hell, literally. 
and her mouth drops. She's like, what? You know, I'm like, read it out aloud again. And it's like, now tell me that the watchtower had not taken that verse out of context. She goes, oh my. You know, and she was like baffled by it. I'm like, yeah. And it's like, I guarantee if you do that to every verse that they quote from the Bible to, you know, try to make it sound like what they're doing, mm-hmm. you, you get, I guarantee you're going to see it's out of context and it has nothing to do with what they're talking about. And I said, yeah. don't, don't feel bad. It's not you guys only. The Mormons do this. The Catholics do this. Islam does this. Um, yeah. Many other religions do this stuff. Yeah. And they, they cherry pick from the scriptures. And she goes, oh, wow. She's like, wow. And then she, I said, do yourself a favor. Go do this when you're home and all that. Uh, take all the verses that they quote for different things. And, you know, take your time, whatever. And she comes back. She goes, you were right. She goes, you were right. Because uh, these verses are out of context. The Bible yeah. doesn't say what the you know, watchtower is trying to say. I'm like, yeah. And it's like, now from here, I hope and pray that you leave that institution there and come to the cross, which is not an institution, it's not a religion, it's a belief. We are the you know, the followers of Jesus Christ. We don't belong to no, we don't submit to no religious leaders. We don't submit to no religion. We submit to Jesus only. We don't need middlemen. We don't need popes. We don't need rabbis. We don't need these uh, 700 club clowns out there. You know, all these televangelists, false prophets. You know what I mean? All we need is Jesus. Well, like to me, I answer to Jesus only. I don't, I don't need nobody else. I pray to Jesus. I don't have to pray to Mary. I don't have to pray to saints. I don't have to pray to dead relatives. Don't have to pray to um, demigods or whatever the case. I got the direct phone number to Jesus. I got the boss's number. I don't need to go through a middleman. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's where Jesus says, yeah, I am the only intercessor between the man and God. That's it. No other name under heaven can you get to the, uh, to the Father but through me. Bottom line. That yeah. alone says it right there. And, uh, and of course, the, all these religions would never point that out. You know, it's crazy, man. It's a psychological war game. They play, they'll yes. pick a couple of verses, and they know that here's the other thing, too. Uh, they know when they um, push a couple of verses out, right, to prove their doctrine, right, they'll put a bunch of them, they'll string like 100 or something. So they know 99% of the people are not even going to bother to read all that. So yeah. you know what? It does say in the Bible, I'm going to leave it at that, and they believe this, the religion, yeah. you know what I mean? And then um, and they, all these churches have the same thing, the church doctrines and all that, and they got a bunch of verses way out of context. And they know most people are not going to uh, go through that. But what I do is I, I went through all this stuff, and I'm like, wow, all right. <laughs> that's unbiblical, that's unbiblical, that's you know, out of context, blah, 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 you know what I mean? And uh, rip right through it, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, they, and uh, people like us are their enemy because we could uh, see through the lies, you know? And uh, and I'm glad you both woke up in the, the Holy Spirit. Thank the Holy Spirit for us, all of us waking up, uh, me waking Waking up out of the Catholic Church, me waking up out of witchcraft and everything else, and, uh, and I, you know, thank you know the Holy Spirit for waking you two up out of this uh, cult uh, called Jehovah Witness. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. amen. Yeah, we're thankful for that. Yes, <laughs> to tell you the truth. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Praise so, a uh, matter of fact, uh, uh, if anyone wants to know more of how to even talk to Jehovah, uh, to Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, that website that I gave you, uh, uh, JW Facts. Yep. Yeah, I mean that's a very good website, but you know there's other uh, people who uh, was in. Now some uh, people who have websites they have kind of turned atheist because you know they lost a lot. So yes, but you know there are a few there. Who, you know they're uh, walking the Christian faith now, and uh, you know uh, so uh, one is uh, what's J no uh, David and. Aspinall, David Aspinall. Well, but there's a few. If you just Google certain people's names on yep. there, you know, uh, you know, XJJWs. Uh, it's this one couple. I forget their name, but they're in black and white. That we had our videos That's in black David and white. And Vivian. David and mm-hmm. Vivian Aspinall. They're yes. pretty good too. Oh, as well. Back now, she was a third generation and she lost everything, but she's, uh, you know, they're Christians now and they put out a whole lot of content. So, really, yep. uh. I'm glad I mean, you brought that up too, brother. Um, how they, they become atheists. Now, here's the thing, right? Um, I, I studied a lot of these people. I don't know if you guys have seen this guy, Morg. He looks like uh, Marilyn Monroe on crack. <laughs> Literally, he's got a web, he's got a big YouTube following, and uh, he so calls debunks the Bible, right? Every uh-huh. time he brags, he was a Catholic graduate from a school and all this other stuff. He made his communion and all that stuff, and he learned the truth, and he walked away from the church and all that, and now he's a, a, a Luciferian, you know what I mean? But the yeah. other thing, here's the thing, right? And a lot of these people, uh, if you notice, right, most people uh, that are in, high into the occult like that, they're mm-hmm. former Catholics, they're former Mormons, they're former Jehovah's Witnesses and all that. Yeah. But the thing yeah. is, here's the thing. They were smart enough to see the BS uh, lies from the, the, the churches, yeah. but not smart enough to take that one step ahead to actually say, you know what, I'm going to read the Bible for myself 
like um, what's the name did uh, the Protestant Reformation. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. John John Whitecliffe, you know what I mean? He read the Bible for himself and uh, Martin Luther and all them. And they were Catholic priests. They read the Bible for themselves. I'm like, wait a minute. The Bible says this, and my Catholic dogma is saying this. This is total contrary, right? But they were smart yeah. enough to keep going. It's like, all right, I'm going to read the Bible. And they became Protestant leaders, you know what I mean? But a lot of these yeah. people in your cult and do these channels, right? They, yeah, they're former Catholics, whatever the case, right? But uh, all you have to do is that take that one, and I try to reach out to them, take that one step further. Go read the Bible in its context, right? Then you go see, you know, the the, the has not the Catholic Church, or whatever, has nothing to do with the Bible at all. You know what I mean? And uh, it's a contrary. You know, the Catechism and it's like mixing oil and water. You know what I mean? With the Book of Mormons, uh, the, uh, the Watchtower, the um, the Quran, all this other stuff. You know what I mean? And so um, that's why I encourage people to take a step further and uh, you know, try to reach mm -hmm. out to these people because the people in the cult, they're very, you know, they they know the Bible. Okay, they they're very smart people. But again, they don't know it in the hearts because it's not written upon the hearts by the Holy Spirit because they never took the time to read the Bible thinking that the Bible is part of that false religion stuff, which is not, you know. So yeah, I know it sounds complicated. I apologize uh, for the rain, yeah. Yeah, but um, yeah, that's uh, what we need to do. And I'm quite happy that you guys did that because easily because of these religions, it's because of religions, most people are atheists. It really is. And I'm well, so happy that you guys didn't well, say, all right, uh, I'm just going to drop all this crap. I'm sick of it. You know what I mean? I'm so happy that you you said, all right, let me take the Bible by itself. Yes. Remove the religious dogma and and then your eyes are open. You know what I mean? I'm glad that happened to you guys. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Well, I think my wife is... Mm. is it's her bedtime. Uh, yeah. Well, I appreciate so, you guys for joining us. Uh, really, uh, yeah. thank, thank you, you for guys having us. For, for having <laughs> us. Anytime. Somebody and uh, yeah. So uh, you know, hopefully we'll uh, I'll meet you, Dan, soon. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure I'll be seeing uh, Brian soon. <laughs> yeah, we'll see y'all. Yeah, we thank you for coming on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bring Brian some here uh, biscuit with hair on it. Yeah, we don't want that. We don't want that hair on a biscuit. Yeah, we don't want that hair on a biscuit. We gotta keep it serious on spiritual warfare. The little Donna's gonna fall out of her seat after that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. God bless you guys. And, uh, yeah. It's been a pleasure. And anytime you guys are welcome on the show. Good night. Okay. Thank you, everybody. You too. Take care. Have a blessed night. Okay. You too. Yeah. See you, Tony. See you, Ladonna. Okay. Thank you all. Bye -bye. Thank you all. Be blessed. Okay. Likewise, everyone. All right, that was a good show. It really was. And um, yeah, and yeah, this one. Oh, yeah, I was going to add too, real quick too. Like these, um, when it comes down to it, you know how you was talking about these atheists and stuff, and they yeah. they miss that one key component, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's it, look when you when you lose everything, mm -hmm. and the the world, the adversary spins it into where you think that you need something else to replace it. So the vanity, you know, like you need to get back on the high pedestal really quick and fast. You know, they, you can do this with pyramid schemes or whatever. They think corporations and businesses, they they expect, they they tell you that you're going to be on this, you know, this high pedestal, so to speak, the sky's the limit, so to speak. And you can go and, and climb up the ladder, the corporate ladder to, you know, to make a million dollars, but it's never obtainable. And mm. it's it's lies is what it is. And that, you know, and what it comes down to, it's when somebody does in the Holy Spirit, acknowledge, you acknowledge that the Holy Spirit is like, okay, it's time to sit back and listen for a minute and be still and listen to what I have to tell you. And you, you let the Holy Spirit move you in that way. When you lose things, you, you, uh, it just come from a personal walk here. When you start to lose things and you start to in health thing in health wise too, and you, you start to understand that, uh, you need to, you need to seek, the Lord seek the father and the son, the Holy spirit to, to guide you and don't seek what man can give you in all kinds of associations. We all know, I mean, you've talked about it all in the spiritual warfare many, many, many times that there is uh there's a wolf in sheep's clothing around the corner saying, Hey Dan, Hey Brian, I know you're hitting rock bottom here. I know you've came out of this body, this assembly that you, you know, was associated with, I can get you fast back on the fast track pretty quick. I know you got this problem, these health issues, vision issues, but I can get you back on the fast track real quick. That's a lie from the devil. And there'll be consequences to these things. And when you sit back and really retain everything and you humble yourself and allow the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit to guide you in the right direction, 
and it will pay off in the long run. Even though it might be 20, 30, 40 years down the road, you might not see nothing. It's it's worth it's worth staying on the narrow path and not trying to take a shortcut to uh, you know to try to find something to fill a void and all you need. We're beyond rich, Dan, and we don't even know it. Mm. We really don't really we don't really understand it. When we, we take advantage of we take advantage every time we wake up, we think, you know, I can get up out of my bed, I can I can see or whatever. You take advantage of these the little tiny things that God has pro- provided us freely given and allow us to adapt to this world. And then once that day happens that you fall off a truck or whatever, impact the head, whatever type of infirmity, and you really start to really uh really hone in you're saying i need i need the only thing i can do is just submit to you i cannot i have to move on i my body my, my body's giving up and i've got to just i can no longer go back to what i used to do i can no longer back to who i used to be so use me use me and don't get caught up in the vanity the money system the the gold and silver the vanity of all vanities you know this old wicked world and and get yourself caught up in, in things that you don't want. And the Lord will provide. The Lord will give you uh, knowledge, you know, knowledge and truth. And I'd rather be in a, a you know, I'd rather be in a, a cabin out in the woods with, you know, a no roof, you know, and rain yeah. pouring down. And, and instead of, you know, and, and uh, no, nah, I don't want to sell my soul is what I'm getting at to yeah. just to kind of summarize it and then come to a conclusion. I don't want to sell my soul. So it's worth it's worth waiting. It's worth waiting and being patient, and waiting on the Lord. Because I know that we always want that fast pace. You mean, give me, give me, give me. But uh, it's it's worth it's worth the wait to. Uh, and if you know, if somebody in the past, you know, like this this program tonight, if you've been, you know, like our guest that came on, if you've been rejected by the, your fellowship or whoever these corporations, these organizations, and they made you feel like that you're nothing. Uh, Jesus died for you. You are something, and uh, the blood, the blood that poured upon you know Golgotha and Calvary, it was it was that sin debt, that payment of what Jesus did. That you're way worth more than what these people are saying. These people that just you know contradict you and, and you know persecute you. And, and if you believe the scriptures and you start shouting for the rooftops of Jesus, let them mock you, let them persecute you, let them hang you, whatever they want to do to you. And, you know, if God doesn't allow them, they cannot touch you. They cannot hurt you. So don't let man, my my point is, don't let the fear of man, you know, like being fearful of man, inter- you know, like make your, uh, your path. Don't let the fear, of, you know, the fear tactic lead you in the wrong path is what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And uh, that's... Um... <laughs> What we all need to do because like uh, it's <laughs> it's critical because the uh, soul's on it you know line. Hang on a second, just getting my uh... yeah. Well, I was just I, I hope everybody enjoyed the program. I'm very thankful for them to come on here. Yeah, it's, me too. Uh, it is nothing but a blessing. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it's uh, time to get into some spiritual warfare. Like uh, now, when I was saying earlier, uh, who's Charles Taze Russell? So. Uh, it's always important to get to know the founder of religion. So we could tell you all day long, I mean, we, you could easily find out who the founder of the faith of Jesus Christ is. Obviously, it's Jesus Christ, right? Go do the research. You find out he did nothing wrong. He, he, you know what I mean? The guy was, he, the our Lord was perfect, plain and simple. So when you get into, um, you know, the spiritual warfare aspect of it, who are these people? You know what I mean? So first of all, Ephesians 5 tells us, right? Uh, 5, 11, 13, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather approve them, right? In other words, go study them, and, you know, to see what they really are, right? And for there's a shame to even speak of those things which are done in them in secret, right? And but all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light, whereas whoever does make manifest is light. So that's where the old thing comes from. Uh, know the deeds of evil and expose them. And that's exactly what we do here. So who is Charles Taze Russells? And yes, a false prophet all day long, okay? Because, and the reason why we call him a false prophet because he predicted the end of the world several times never happened, all right? And uh, they came and gone, and whatever the case, that's a false prophet. Even if you're wrong once, you're a false prophet. You shouldn't even be doing that when the Bible says the opposite, all right? So Charles Taze Russells, um, 1856 to 1916, he was a pastor. Russell formed a Bible study group in uh, Algony City in the 1870s where he developed uh, the Watchtower Bible and a tract society, and it became legal corporation for the Jehovah Witnesses. That's the parent corporation of the Jehovah Witnesses. Uh, he lived in the Bible house nearby, which is his, um, you know, sign here. So basically, it's a little explanation who he was and 
Yen. That's him right here. And uh, he's, you know, like, he, again, the founder of the, it was called the Zion, at first, the Zion Watchtower Track Society. And right there, Zion enough should tell you enough, all right? And I'm not bashing Jews, but the Zionists, you know who they are, okay? Plain and simple. They're Kabbalistic people. And, you know, this guy is pure into Kabbalah. Uh, Charles Stace Russell's, right? And there's many, many uh, things about him. Uh, and again, it's from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It was um, Jehovah's Witnesses started in 1872. That's uh, the foundation of the Jehovah's Witnesses. And um, there was a lot of people, you know, talk about him being a Freemason, which he was. He was a Freemason. And we'll show you the gravestones and everything, too. And people were asking, a lot of people brought this up, researchers, why was Alistair Crowley and Charles Stace Russell's such good friends in the Masonic Rite of the Order of the Knights Templar in New York City in the 1870s. Now, if you don't know who Alistair Crowley is, um, we, I mean, like, Alistair Crowley was literally probably the most evilest man that ever lived, uh, besides Satan himself or the Antichrist, whatever. This guy was um, into hundreds of secret societies. He formed several secret societies by himself, the Order of the Eastern Star, um, and, uh, the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, I can name a list of them. And this guy literally, um, uh, try to put this way in a nice term here, I don't think it's a nice term to say this, but he sodomized children and killed them for blood rituals, a, uh, that's where the adrenochrome thing came from and everything else. He created his own brand of magic. This guy was wicked as they come, plain and simple. Wicked as they come. So uh, we're going to do a show sometime on um, Alistair Crowley. But if you want to know more on him, go look him up. And no, uh, this guy was far from a good man. He was called the Beast for a reason. Okay. But anyway, he ran in close ties with um, Charles Taste Russell. And not just him, too. If you look at a lot of modern day religions, right? And you'll see that, uh, Alistair Crowley or Madame H. P. Pavlovsky, they were inspired, they inspired directly or indirectly, inspired the founders of these religions. Kind of, it's what a coincidence is, huh? No coincidence, right? So, um, yeah, Charles Taze Russell's ran in with Alistair Crowley. And it goes further than that, too, because we talk about Freemasons, and we did shows here, uh, tons of them exposed to Freemasonry. And, uh, of course, he's got his own, um, we'll get to that in a second, his um, Bible, they call it the Watchtower. Now, the Bible says, don't turn it your ears to doctrines of men or of devils, and that's exactly what that is. The Watchtower, and the other thing too is if you're taking notice of Watchtower, right? Does that sound familiar? Anybody who's been into witchcraft, the Watchtowers? You, you cast incantations upon Watchtowers and witchcraft, right? So that alone shows you his witchcraft roots too. Because a lot of the rituals in that Watchtower are very similar to witchcraft and Freemasonry. And he, goes, he says right out, right? This is quoted from him. Our work has been to bring together these long scattered fragments of truth and present them to the Lord's people. Not as new, not as our own, but as the Lord. So his version of all these, like his Babylonian crap that he put together, he's trying to convince people that this is the Lord's work. Sounds like Joseph Smith, huh, with his Book of Mormons? Same thing. You know what I mean? And the history on him, uh, founded in the 1870s, uh, the... Jehovah's Witness, right? And they first called it the Zion's Watchtower and Track Society, right? And the name Jehovah's Witnesses was not adopted to officially until 1931. And this is Charles Chase Russell's. He says, our Masonic friends have it done very fine. A church of God would never say that in the world. Never, okay? Our Masonic friends have it done very fine. I do not know where they got it so well. I have often wondered where they found out so many of our secrets of our high intercepted order of masonry. Yeah, the same thing, right? And he also says, I am very glad to have this particular opportunity of saying a word about some of the things at which we agree with our Masonic friends because we are speaking in a building dedicated to masonry. Boom, right there. And we also are Masons. Right there, this is Charles Taste Russell's, right? Once again, I am very glad to have this particular opportunity of saying a word about some of the things that which we agree with our Masonic friends because uh, we are speaking in the same building, in a building, I'm sorry, dedicated to Masonry, and we also are Masons. I am a Freemason. Quote by Charles Taste Russell's, right? Now, this is his new grave, right? This was his old one. Like um, the couple were saying on the show tonight, uh, they took this down because they're trying to erase, you know, the background. Like uh, Planned Parenthood, they're trying to erase the history of Margaret Sanger, or her, the founder, right? 
because she was uh, w- racist as they come. So they're trying to get uh, her, you know, erase that history, right? So it looks like the Jehovah's Witnesses are trying to erase this Masonic history of their organization and their founder. This is his new grave. This is the old one. Kind of crazy, huh? And also he uses his winged sun uh, logo, right? Now, if you know anything about symbolism, let me pull that up real quick. Hang on a second. And this is uh, an old Egyptian deity, right? So this is also um, a book by them, uh, the Mormons. I mean, they keep saying the Mormons. The same thing, just about. But yeah, Jehovah Witnesses, the divine plan of all ages. And look at the logo, right? Now, Charles Tate Russell's used this logo all the time. And this all this is an old Egyptian symbol. It sim- symbolizes the sun god just about. Right? So should Christians be using that? So what they do, right? They'll say, oh, well, this is from the Bible, right? Uh, I forgot what verse I had the context here. Hang on a second. I got it here somewhere. So they'll say this is from the Bible. And he brings up, um, I messed this up here. My bad. So um, I was going to, yeah, Malachi 4 2, right? So they justify. They justify this winged eagle, right? Winged eagle. To use this winged eagle, right? And it's an Egyptian deity. That's what it is, right? They justify it to, you know, and of course they cherry pick the Bible. They bring up um, Malachi 4 2. But unto you that my fear, you fear my name, that shall the son of righteousness arise and heal in his wings, and you go forth and grow up as calves in of the stall. Now, that's not the same thing, okay? This is not the same thing as this Egyptian deity. These esoteric symbols here. Not at all. No person of God would ever use something satanic like that. And yes, it's pure satanic. This is ancient um, uh, esoteric knowledge. These are satanic deities. I'm going to put it right to the bottom point, right? So he ju- you misuses this Bible rest to justify using the satanic thing. The winged sun symbol. Whoops, where is it? Hang on a second. Yeah, I keep passing it. So it's an ancient Egyptian symbol that attests from the old kingdom, uh, the 26th century. Repentant, um, yeah, I can't read that. So I, I I misplaced where I put the definition because I had from the book, you know, the cult symbols. I forgot to put that slide up there. So I apologize. But long story short, this is an ancient Egyptian symbol that he justifies to use right and of course it mistakes the bible verse that has nothing to do with the same thing you know what i mean it's it's not the same thing right and uh, so when i was saying earlier that he had um ties in with um alistair crawley and all this stuff right and uh but leanne rhymes right uh leanne rhymes uh, you know who she is and she's a vip what uh, some celebrity or whatever she says that scientologists and jehovah witnesses have the same rhetoric And the tax will continue. She's being attacked for exposed now, right? So Scientology is formed by L. Ron Hubbard, right? And uh, this is all connected, right? L. Ron Hubbard, he's um, the founder of Scientology, right? And if you notice the, the very same trend, which is book Dianax, right? The very same trend uh, that they go by. Same thing with the Mormons, Joseph Smith, that lived about 100 years before Charles Chase Russell's. They all have the same trend, all of them. They created their own doctrines to say it's of God. You know what I mean? And their, their stories just don't make sense at all. Complete asinine, cockamamie, and crap. And, you know, Joseph Smith was a Mason. Uh, Alistair Crowley was definitely a Mason. The, um, Charles Chase Russell was a Mason. So was no run Hubbard. Not a coincidence, right? And they all have the same eschatology teachings of Madame Pavlovsky or Alistair Crowley. Or both. Not a coincidence. And I just want to run through him here. Uh, just to show you this stuff, guys, and I don't want to take too much of your time here. But, yeah, that's what it is, and um, this is what the symbol is. It's an ancient Mesopotamian symbol. Mm-hmm. And, it's a, you know, in Zoroastrian Persia, the symbol is a winged sun because it became part of an iconography of the Fevraya, the symbol of the divine power of royal glory in Persi- Persian culture. This is not the... Bi- this is not... Um, the Bible, you know, with the Bible there, uh, Malachi. That's not what he's talking about, Malachi. Complete two different things. You know what I mean? So they, all the time, to try to do that, right? 
and a watchtower. Uh, so remember, they used to call it the Zionist watchtower. Yeah. They changed that real quick when uh, Zionism started being exposed. You know, and then if you read Revelations two, Revelation chapter two and Revelation chapter three talks about the fake Jews who profess to be Jews but are not, and they belong to the synagogue of Satan, i.e., the Zionists, the Rothschild, those people out there. Those are the fake ones, okay? And of course, they had a big connection with the Jehovah Witnesses. Why? Because of the Kabbalah. Okay, he was in deep into Kabbalah. So it wasn't the rest of those clowns. They, uh, Alistair Crawley and all them. They were deep into the Kabbalah movement. That's why they all have the same exact trends. And then, you know, the spirits they claim to talk to, right? These are, uh, the Bible calls them familiar spirits. They look familiar, but they're not what you think they are. They're demonic spirits, plain and simple. And um, so I don't want to take too much of your time up. Let me just get to the rest of my slides quick. And, uh, yeah, and actually, yeah, I'm all done with the slides. So, uh, so yeah, I just want to give you a rundown who Charles Taste Russell was. And uh, someday we should just do a show uh, just exposing these guys in general because it's very important mm -hmm. to know who the founder is, okay? And if you're new out there in the world, guys, and uh, you're like, ah, I want to go check out a faith. And I, tell you, I would suggest don't do that. I would suggest following Jesus. But, however, I would, you know, for your benefit, I would study who these people were first, before you've indulged in them, like you got uh, Muhammad, right? The guy was a pedophile, a tyrant. I'm gonna say it right out. I don't care. The guy was evil as they come. All right, changed his mind all the time, and it was, it was just ridiculous, right? And all these founders out there are disgusting people. Real uh, Constantine, the you know, created the Catholic Church, you know, hijacked the Christianity movement, and we're gonna do a show on that. So nothing to do with Christianity. Traditional Christians refuse to obey anything to do from the Catholic Church. Two different things. So if you look at all these founders of these things, guys, you got to understand they all have the same trend. They are cultists. They practice divinization. Most of them are Freemasons or belong to some sort of secret society. Connection with the Illuminati, connection with Aleister Crowley in some way, or um, Madam H. P. Pavlovsky, especially the modern day ones, I should say. Uh, so yeah, do the research and you'll see every one of these guys have the same traits. But guess who doesn't have any of those traits? Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen, Diane. And I want to address one thing, too. This is another thing going around. Um, they said the missing years, the quote-unquote missing years of Jesus Christ, he went out and studied uh, Hinduism and all the Eastern religion. Why would he go study something he was against? Those are Babylonian religions. He would never study those things. This is God in the flesh. He already knew about those things. He's exposing those things. He says to stay away from those things. So I just want to address those people out there that think that Jesus and his quote-unquote missing years, and if you actually read the Bible, you'll see that there's no missing years because those so-called missing years, he was in the synagogues, uh, and in the temples, I mean. He was learning, uh, preaching the scripture in the, in the temples, and he was out going, going out there talking to people, and he spent most of his time at the time just fasting and talking to the Father, learning from the Father. Hmm. Those so-called missing, yes. So he wasn't out in um, Peru or any of these uh, crazy places like that, or out in Asia and all that. No, he was right where he was, but he spent most of the time with the father. Then when yeah, the father they, says, that you're ready, go, boom. Then he started witnessing the people. Yeah, they um, also, just to add to that, it's actually yeah. kind of interesting that you brought that up. Um, they say the missing time, too, is like he learned the uh, ancient of the uh, ancient uh, deities and stuff yeah. like Thoth of the Emerald Tablets and like the Atlantean narrative, Dan, like no joke. Wow. And they say, they say that through Thoth, like the, he was a scholar and all this stuff, very educated and that, you know, the, in the, in the arts and stuff. And mm. he, Jesus was, <laughs> Jesus able to understood that and then become an ascended master. And that's <laughs> when you come into this QAnon movement, no joke, no joke. So they, they, this ascending ascension, ascending master, that he's mastering the things of fall. And that's where, Dan, that's some very scary stuff. Yeah, we'll have to is. do a broadcast on that one day. But uh, yeah. and like you said, Jesus was at Jesus was at the foundation when whenever the foundation was laid and the sons of God shouted for joy. The father and the son was there. Jesus knew. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> Come on now. I mean, you, are you think like are you really gonna Put Jesus in that category of a of a man, like literally of a, uh, like seriously, he lowered himself. It says it's in Hebrews. He lowered himself lower to lower than the angels, 
so he could uh, literally redeem us, so he could die for us. Like he took on the form of man. Yeah. And you, th- like he has all knowledge, all knowing. It came. He knew what was going on. He knew all up until when he went up to the cross and after. I mean, the man knew he didn't have to be like, oh yeah, let me go study these things out so I can become the ascended master or or understand these arts. He had no need. He had no place to even hide it. Like lay his head. He was a carpenter. You think he, the things of this world had no ties. He didn't, he had a mission to mm-hmm. go to the cross. It has, that's some very bad stuff. It has rhetoric stuff is, uh, they're including with that. And then proclaiming that Jesus went to Peru and all these different places. And that's where that stuff comes from. It's the Thoth and all that. No joke. And he went um, to Egypt for years. Give me a break. You know what I mean? Uh, mm-hmm. And um, I, I found that um, I had the slides all backwards, so I want to backtrack one quick second here. I remember I said, but the Watchtower Doctrine, right? The name Watchtower is, it's Enochian magic. So, and here's the thing, right? Look at this. This was popularized by what? The Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. Who created that? It was Alistair Crowley. Alistair Crowley was good friends with Charles Taylor Russell's. So, if you read this, like the Watchtower Guardian is a ceremonial magic and tradition of Tulinary spirit of one of the four cardinal points of the east, west, south, and north. Uh, many uh, magical traditions. They understood the Enochian angels, okay? And they, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Uriel, and, and they, they, shame on them because they bring up these good angels here. Gabriel, Michael, Raphael, Uriel, and, uh, Arch, you know, the archangels, yeah? And they twist it completely. And they, these are the same people who believe Jesus is actually Enoch. The, it, 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 it's crazy, the angel in the world one day, I should say. You know what I mean? Now, these people are nuts. You know what I mean? And these are the same people who call the Holy Spirit, blasphemy the Holy Spirit to say it's a, a woman, right? But and it's mm-hmm. not a coincidence that the Watchtower, okay, this is also used in witchcraft too. But the mm-hmm. Watchtower is uh, deep rooted into um, Western es- esotericism, okay, which is Kabbalah. This is all Kabbalistic stuff for medical Auto Golden Dawn, Kabbalah, right? It's not a coincidence, it's all deep rooted into Kabbalah. And not a coincidence mm-hmm. that. Mr. Charles Taste Russell's there was into this stuff, okay? And then he created his own religion off that. And if you notice, it was a spawn of religions that started through the 17 and 1800s, especially the 1800s. It was a spur of major religions popping up all over the country. You know, the, the Mormons were the first ones, and then um, it just opened the floodgates. Um, then you had uh, all these other cults that popped up in the 1800s and the 1900s, and all, all of them have the same connection, directly or indirectly connected to Aleister Crowley. Or Madam H. P. Pawlowski. So uh, we're gonna do a show one day, and we're gonna bring David Carrick on for this one. But it's called uh, it'll be called um, the Crawley Connection. And you gotta see him, the space program, NASA, mm-hmm. um, the whole nine yards. It's all from Crawley, plain and simple, man. Mm-hmm. And uh, organizations, secret societies, um, yeah, all kinds of crazy stuff, man. <laughs> and it's yeah, all connected the, to Crawley, man. Absolutely, the, the Enochian. Speaking of the Enochian, yeah. uh, you had that slide up the that or, or the Enochian sin, sin, mm-hmm. system, Enochian language. Um, I, I'll go as far as to say this: um, the Enochian language is your modern day coding. I hate to be like that with the AI narrative. Yeah, you bet, you bet, it's in there because I've looked, I've seen programs say like the demon, daemon. I've seen like coding with uh, literally I, I uninstalled a program. It said red. I'm not kidding you guys. It said red giant. I couldn't believe I was like, why is this coming up in the command prompt and tell me the coding? And it kept saying red giant, red giant, delete, delete. And it was just kind of going through the, you know, the, the flow of uh, deleting it off the system. But I just want to bring that up. It's there's an Enochian language mixing with the ritualistic magic and all the stuff that's involved. And you're talking about Aleister Crowley with the, mm. you know, the whole program, Dan, is just one. It's baffling, man. There's so much stuff. We could do we could do a wild show oh, on yeah. uh, NASA and portals and stuff without. I mean, we could do a wild one. I'm having my gears are turning, man, since, while we're on air here. But, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of angelic. There's an angelic application is what I would say with the AI narrative. And mm-hmm. Harold McCain, one of our chat room moderators, uh, he said Aleister Crowley, went uh, to John Nelson Darby's church and was a follower. So, and if you don't know who John Nelson Darby is, he was a creator of this, which uh, him, I mean, he wasn't originally creator, but he was the big push, him and um, Cyrus Schofield of the Schofield Bible. They completely injected poison into the modern day Christian churches. And um, the, 
the founders, uh, the real founders, I should say, of dispensationalism. The one saved, always saved garbage, the pre-tribulation rapture garbage. Yeah, that's where they came from. Not a coincidence, Alistair Crowley ran in with those guys too. So if you look, there's always some kind of a route to Alistair Crowley, except for Joseph Smith, because he lived 100 years before Crowley did. Uh, but other than that, man, it's like uh, all these religions today and uh, cults and all that, most of them are popped off from Crowley and uh, Bulowski mm -hmm. there. So, um, that, I mean, that, that's huge, especially John Nelson Darby. We did a whole show uh, a couple weeks ago, a few weeks ago, exposing mm -hmm. the dispensationalism, then uh, scenes garbage, and it's sickening. Crazy, man. And people wonder why there's so much chaos yeah. in our realm today. <laughs> I'm not trying to be sarcastic. I just, you really yeah, look right, at bro. it and you look overall general layout of the template of what's going on in our reality from the CERN, you know, Hydrogen Collider to the system that we're, <laughs> you know, we're bound to. It's like insane. And that's why this is a really good broadcast to understand that we are free in Christ and, and the whole, you know, as far as what he did and the gift of salvation, it's unbelievable, Dan. I mean, it, you, know, you can't you can't say it enough. Jesus is king and praise God, right? I mean, there's yeah. and it's a it's a blessing. It's a blessing to be on here and be able to talk about this stuff. And I pray this reaches this broadcast reaches people and I pray that it's well received. Mm -hmm. And I um, want to apologize to our Heavenly Father because I forgot to do one big thing before we started the show. And we forgot to pray at the start of the show and I apologize so we'll do an extra special prayer after the show here. You want to take some phone calls? Or? Yeah, Dan, why not? Hey, guess what? It's only 10 p.m., everybody, at me yeah, and Dan's crazy. time. So, yeah. uh, I mean, early. yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, we're, I'm, I'm up for calls, Dan. Mm -hmm. So, guys, like the rules, like always, just um, don't talk about elections. Don't talk about the koofy juice. And um, when you call, and let if it rings once, we just drop the call from you. Don't call back. Don't keep you remember. Don't keep calling back because we have a caller ID. So what we do is like if somebody's on the phone and you call, we reject the call right away, and we will call you back in turn. So please don't keep calling because I know some people just keep calling and calling and calling. Don't do that. Uh, just call once, okay? I'll reject the call if somebody's on the air, and then we'll call you back in turn. So just please be patient. I just want to point that out, guys. That's all. And uh, just try to, um, I'm not, you know, giving you an exact time limit, but just try to get to the point, you know what I mean? Because sometimes these calls just line up, like nobody calls in 10 minutes later, we got 15 people calling at once, you know what I mean? So just uh, try to, um, you know, get to the point and all that stuff. And if you want to do testimonies, you want to talk about this on the air, you know, what we talked about tonight, or you got some spiritual warfare problems or whatever, anything like that, you know what I mean? So please uh, give us a call if you want to call and say, hey, you guys stink. Or if you guys are going to call say, hey, you guys are awesome, whatever the case, go for it. You know what I mean? So uh, so the phone lines are open there. So we'll give you guys a couple minutes because I know there's a delay on the YouTube here. But, yeah, Brian, I, you know, thanks for bringing those guests on, man. That was a good show. Yeah, it's been a blessing. There you go. Uh, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I love both of them. They're very yeah. good people. 913, you're on here. What's your name? Uh, this is Daniel. Psalm 91. Hey, Daniel, how's it going, brother? Good. How are you, brother, man? Oh, pretty good. It's rocking. Um... Well, thank you guys for uh, doing this uh, testimony tonight. That was that was really, really awesome. Uh, it was very helpful for me because uh, I've had some encounters with Jehovah's Witness recently. They came by my house knocking on the door, and I started talking to them and trying to speak some truth to them. And, uh, and they were, you know, they're nice people, just, just like everyone else. And, but, you know, I was trying to tell them about the Godhead and try to explain some of those things. And they were, they were very intrigued at the fact that, you know, I told them, well, I, we don't do the pagan holidays and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, I didn't really, I actually learned a lot in this show tonight. I didn't really know some of the different little doctrines that they had. So like the, Michael the Archangel and some of those things that kind of blew my mind, but uh, I actually like by a chance ran into those same people like a month after they came to my house and I talked to them for like an hour oh, and nice. just really tried my best and was telling them like, look, you know, I mean, I read like uh, Isaiah, uh, you know, Emmanuel, God in the flesh, like so many different scriptures like that, and they just couldn't, you know, they just couldn't hear it for some reason. But 
But yeah, I just wanted to call in and say I really loved that. That was awesome. Thank you guys so much. Oh, you're welcome, man. Yeah, uh, good job doing that, though, brother. And uh, you you planted the seed, so I I pray that seed uh, sprouts. Yeah, I wrote them a letter too. If they ever come back by my house, I don't know if they will after the last time, because <laughs> you know I made it real <laughs> real clear that you know we weren't having it. But you know, if they ever do, I have a letter for them and with a bunch of those scriptures and. And we talk Bible translations and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, but it's just, I could, I could really tell if, if you weren't, you know, built on the rock, if you weren't in the Bible and knew the truth, how they could get you, man. I mean, you know, it, even just talking to him for like about an hour, it literally was like defiling to my spirit. Like, I had to pray about it and, you know, read the Bible a bunch and stuff like that because just some of the stuff, man, it's, it's so sad. And, you know, like I read that scripture right to him where it says, where Jesus says, if you believe not that I am he, you will die in your sins, mm-hmm. you know. And it just, you know, <laughs> so it's like, what do you, what do you say to that, you know. And, uh, and it just had no effect honestly, but, you know, now, now recently I've been reading the Bible a lot, I mean, as always, but with that kind of stuff in mind, and there's so many places, like, where the Pharisees, uh, you know, wanted to kill Jesus, because he was telling them point blank, yeah, I am God, (laughs) I am Jehovah God in the flesh, you know, and they wanted to kill him, and it's like, man, you guys are no different from the Pharisees. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Uh, and, uh, Brother Brian, I was going to say, too, uh, yeah, if you guys could do something on the Ascended Masters, too, that would be awesome because there was someone that I worked with for a long time when I first became a believer who was into that. And well, that's actually was, in the works right now because uh, I'm uh, uh, gathering some more research. I want to, like, really nail this home on uh, the New Age movement. Mm-hmm. And they work all yeah. for ascended masters, so they think Jesus is nothing but ascended master and all that. And uh, so we're we're yeah. definitely gonna get into that and um the astral projection and all the stuff. And uh, we're gonna t- we're gonna nail that home. But I'm just doing a little more research right now. I just want to get my eyes dotted, you know, locate eyes and uh, T's crossed and all that good stuff. You know, I will get that guy to check that out because mm-hmm. um, I still. I, I have him on LinkedIn and yep. he was someone that I worked with one on one for for a long time when I was doing aerospace stuff and uh he actually lives out there in Indiana now. Um but you know, a real, real nice guy. I honestly don't think he realizes that Ascended Masters is Luciferian doctrine. Mm-hmm. Like I don't mm-hmm. I don't know if he has any idea that like dude, you're you believe in Luciferianism, do you know that? <laughs> you know? <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so th- that'll be great. But thank you guys very much. I love all you guys. Love and, you too, uh, brother. God bless you all. Love you too, brother, yep. and God bless you. Well, blessings, Daniel. All right. And, uh, we'll be at the uh, at the barn for Pentecost too. So. Oh, nice. Uh, so if anyone's there, I-, I think I might make like a little name tag or something so people <laughs> can identify us. Yeah, I tell but, everybody to put their right. YouTube names. <laughs> It's more easier. Yeah, I'm, I think I'm going to do that, actually. Yeah. <laughs> but, okay, all right. I love Jake, you guys. God love bless you, brother. You. Good night. I'll see, you. I'll see you at Pentecost, Daniel. Okay, next up is uh, Bobby Hale. It's our oh, brother. Oh, Bobby. I actually got to meet Bobby down in Tennessee there at yeah. the meet and greet. Oh, Bobby. Cool. Yeah, Bobby's, Bobby's a really cool guy. Hey, what's up, Bobby? How you doing, brother? Not too much. How are you guys doing? All right, not bad. It's uh, rocking the show here. Yeah, yeah, it was a good one tonight. I, I just mostly listening, but yeah, I had an opportunity to talk to a Jehovah's Witness one time. Kind of got into a debate with him, and John one one came up, and that that uh, you know, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word or Word was with God, and the Word was God, and there says a God, mm. meaning, you know, it's a polytheistic religion. I just thought that was a really interesting, uh, interesting yeah. point to it all that they don't believe in just one God, even though 
you know, they will argue they believe in just one God, but um, yeah, good job, brother. My, but yeah, how are you fellas doing? Oh, pretty good. good. Hanging in there, hanging in there, Bobby. Yeah. Brian's yeah, hanging there about, like a hair on a biscuit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's about the same here, fellas. I just wanted to check in with y'all and say hi. So. Well, yeah, blessings, uh, brother. It was nice seeing you though back in Tennessee a couple weeks ago. That was pretty yeah, awesome. that was great. Hopefully, we can do it again. Absolutely. So, drive up but, to drive up to Pentecost if you can. If it's not, I know it's a haul for you. Yeah, yeah. I I was really going to try. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it, but um, but yeah, I was going to try to. But, well, I love you guys and uh, love you too, brother. We'll haul. We'll haul yeah, right we'll to y'all later. You, Shalom. But, shalom. Shalom. Yeah, Bobby's pretty cool, man. I'm glad I got to talk to him at the meet and greet. Yeah. He's pretty awesome. Like, it's funny, because, uh, if you guys ever go to meet and greet, yeah, like, yeah, that's a good idea. Put your name tag, right? Your name, and above that, put your YouTube name. Because I'm like, people come up to me, hey, Dan, you know, great show, blah, blah, blah. You know, I'm like, what's your YouTube name? Because I'm Jess or whatever. Like, I, I was like, but what's your YouTube name? That's why I know people by, you know, and, uh, so um, put your YouTube name, you know what I mean? So that that's awesome. But it's it's great it's, uh, to actually um, meet people, you know, that listen yeah. to our shows and everything, and uh, it's a Absolutely. blessing. Yeah, what's uh, what's bad, though, is uh, the Rumble The Rumble name will be different than their YouTube name. Oh, yeah. So they'll have two different screen <laughs> names. You can't hardly tell who's who. Yeah. I'm this on the YouTube, and I'm that on Rumble. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and... Uh, and by the way, guys, like we got um I hate saying this, but um we got a donation page up on the ch- in the chat there, and also in the description, it's like right there. It says help support our uh, broadcast here. So um it's a Ko-Fi site. It's basically you don't have to sign up for nothing. You put whatever amount you want to donate and use whatever card, and it comes right to us. And for me and Brian here and our broadcast and everything for his visual disturbance and the Truth Radio Show here, and uh, it's like we're all one big family, the whole Nice TV group. Uh, we're just one giant family. That's why we work around each other too, and um, on shows and all that. So please um, support all our shows. Jason's channel, my brother here. Uh, there, it's all in the chat, uh, the description. If you go in the description, take a couple minutes, and please subscribe to all these channels that we got link- linked there because. Um, what YouTube does, as you all know, they've been following me for years. I had a uh, channel was surging over 20,000 uh, subscribers. It was getting big. YouTube decides one day, we're going to terminate you. You know, I terminated my channel and millions of views on a lot of these videos and all that. And uh, just gone just like that. So this was my backup channel. I do got a backup channel. So I pray that you subscribe to that as well. Uh, because we got to keep two, three steps ahead of the enemy. You know what I mean? So, And a big thing I always say, try to promote is my website. Because truthradioshow.com. Not only has links to my shows, but Brian's, Jason's, Nice TV. So basically, we're always going to figure a way to broadcast, no matter what. So if you go to truthradioshow.com, you'll have the exact link. You can actually watch the show on the website. It's pretty cool. So um, yeah. instead of worrying about um, what channel you're going to be on, just go to truthradioshow.com. And uh, we always have the link for our next broadcast and archives as well. So please do that. And it's also links to our channels, our social media accounts, the whole nine yards. Yeah, I actually have a Rumble channel now too, mm. so I've been trying to build it up. So yeah, the, I don't, I don't think we had the link in the description, but yeah, I do have a Rumble channel. Nice. I'm building that up, building that up too. And yeah, subscribe to Jason Badoni, like Dan said, and <laughs> Visual Disturbance, and uh, be glad, be oh, glad tra- to have Trey you. Boy. Oh Trey, oh Course Correction Radio. <laughs> But, oh, um, speaking of that, Trey's coming out next week. Uh, I'll get to that in a minute. Sister Anne Marie, how you doing, Sister? Hey, Brother Dan Bedondi. Hi, Brother Brian. How are you doing? Hello, Anne. How are you? I don't know why planes don't fly, Brian. Yeah, I'm <laughs> telling you. <laughs> <laughs> can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. I'm trying. Okay. I, I understood you. I'm just All trying right. to come back with the comment. <laughs> that was a great short, Brian. That was really good. I really enjoyed that. <laughs> so how you my doing, planes system? don't fly. 
Okay. Um, I want to say great show tonight, and yes, thank you, Jesus, that you're you're in the works of doing uh, an ascended master uh, show. That is going to be phenomenal. Yeah. I've always wondered how that tied in. Whether, and I'm not educated that much on it. Whether it starts out with yoga and New Age, and then it combines into something else. Um, so I'm, I'm fascinated and excited to watch that show. Um, I wanted to give it an experience, if that's okay with you, Dan. Oh, go for it. Okay. Um, I left, uh, let's see, a law firm. And I went to work in, um, the Army. Architectural. Uh, we built buildings, and um, I can't say too much about that, but we built, we built um, and were contracted to build buildings all over the world. Um, long story short about that, the young lady that I took her place was unfortunately killed the weekend before in a car accident and decapitated. They had a, uh, which is very sad, it broke my heart. I interviewed, the gentleman had her in there for 20-something years, was crying. And it was between me and another girl. Well, I did not get the job. Finally, uh, the girl he hired, because I was a young girl, I was in my early 20s, the girl that he hired, she never showed, so I got the job. There was a temporary there, and the temporary was teaching me their system, and this was way back in the 80s, um, their architectural army system, which is very, very different and complicated. So I had to learn the whole managerial garbage, and it was a lot. It was an overload. So. I went to lunch one day, and I came back one day, and she was sitting next to me. And I always had the heebie-jeebies from this temporary. Remember when they had temp services back there, and you could hire temporary? Mm -hmm. Well, she turned around, and she she hissed at me. She went, (laughs) she said, I'm a druid witch. And I made a cross with my fingers, and I said, I'm a daughter of the Most High God. And she got up and walked out. <laughs> yeah. I am not kidding you. And, and the boss comes in. He goes, well, where would so-and-so go? Susan, whatever her name was. I said, uh, I think she quit. <laughs> he goes, why? I said, long story, another day. He never asked me why. But she got in my face, manifested, not kidding, this should be an L.A. Marzulli story, had fangs come out at me, not kidding, (laughs) and it sounds like I make this stuff up, but I don't, and um, it was real quick, I mean, uh, PDQ and out the door, (laughs) and then I grabbed her bag and out the door, (laughs) and uh, that was a real, real interesting uh, story, but I I just thought I would share that with you. So, yeah, we have to be on our our toes all the time. And I I do thank you so much for praying for us in the beginning Hmm. of your show. I think it's paramount as well as ending the show out. I think it it helps us, Dan. It helps us, Brian. And we're indebted and we're grateful for, for all of you. We're very grateful for you. So... Great show and great um, Thank you. comprehensive study on Acts. Yes, we're in Acts, so we're doing, we're, we're getting along there. Yeah, I can't believe it already. And um, I start off with, the, you know, I did Jude one day for the fun of it. This is only one chapter. Then I'm like, let me try Matthew, because I was like very fluent in Matthew. Then went to uh, Mark, Luke, John, and now I'm in like well, chapter six or seven now. Going whatever, going to seven, I think, in uh, Acts, and uh, I'm like, wow, it's going. Before we know it, gonna be in Revelation. I, I can't wait for that. And it's cool Yay. too, because like the learn, the more you learn, so when you get to, because Revelation, uh, yeah, honestly, to tell you, it's a very complicated book. 
Uh, but the thing is, if you know the scriptures, it helps when you read it, you understand it better. So uh, as I'm going along progressing, um, I'm also, it's going to help me in Revelation because a lot of these Revelation prophecies we've been bringing up that, you know, people misinterpret, we're able to give you the truth of it because we understand the scriptures better. But it's a constant thing because you, uh, I, I I could never stop reading the Bible because like well, there's more, always more to learn and uh, you could never know it all, you know what I mean? So uh, the Bible has to be a, a daily thing, like the daily bread, you know? And uh, So yeah, thank you and I appreciate you. Yes, support and everything. You're very welcome. And I always uh, share with other people, they say, why are you always reading the Bible? Why are you always reading the Bible? You read the Bible all the time. I said, because I want to know what's going to go down. Mm -hmm. I want to know what's coming at me. (laughs) So I'm going to be able to handle it. Because if you don't know the Word of God, and and you're right, nobody's going to know it all. We're never, we're not going to be able to comprehend it all. But I want to know as much as I can possibly know. Uh, very, very long story short, so I can know what's coming at me. So when these little gray things and these little, you know, Anunnaki and the little white ones or the tall, long-necked ones mm-hmm. uh, come at us, we know what we're dealing with. Yeah, because Jesus says uh, men's hearts are going to fail for what's coming up here on the earth. And uh, then you read uh, Revelation 9, prophecy about the abyss, uh, these uh, 200 million uh, Nephilim creatures coming out of the abyss. Not China, by the way, people. It's not China and Russia. It's Nephilim creatures from mm-hmm. the abyss. Uh, it makes that very clear. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be horrifying. I mean, but uh, they're only going to attack the people who are not sealed by God. So, uh, you know, if we're alive then, I hope and pray that we're all sealed by God to, you know, so we don't get harmed by these things. And so, yeah, and it's, a, it's such an amazing thing. And uh, you can't be cocky and stuff uh, because we know, I mean, we all see these ministers on TV. They think they're the cat's meow. And, uh, you know, what I mean, and, uh, right. you, you can't tell them nothing. You know what I mean? And they, they don't want to learn nothing more because they think they know it all. And uh, you can't be cocky. You can't have an ego and stuff. You need to be uh, open, but with the you know wisdom and the spirit, the Holy Spirit, you know, the Holy Ghost. So let the Holy Ghost lead you. That's what I do in the Bible studies. Um, I just let the Holy Ghost lead me. And whatever comes to my uh-huh. heart from the Holy Ghost is uh, my mind. I'm sure say it's from Him, you know, and uh, and that's it's been going good so far. Well, He's our teacher. Yep. That's why you always say we don't need a pastor. We don't need. He's our rabbi. He's our yep. teacher. And um, uh, one other quick thing, Brian, I think you're doing a phenomenal, phenomenal job mm-hmm. on all of your work, and it, it's just fascinating and we went through ohio uh not too long ago and wow that's all i can say is wow just wow yeah brian's awesome (laughs) yeah he's good so i'm gonna let you go and uh great job and we love you and you're welcome for the support it is my great honor to support you we're to give honor to honor who is due, and we bless mm-hmm. you in Jesus' name. Thank you, sister, and God bless. Yeah, bless you. Okay, bye So uh, we'll wrap it up for phone calls tonight because uh, we got a, a long thing tomorrow going on. You know the. Uh, the the wife with the, uh, her in law is and all that stuff. It's just like uh, yeah, I mean, her my parents. I'm saying uh, they got some uh, thing going on tomorrow night and uh, for Sunday anyway, some uh, celebration, yeah, yeah. Mother's Day thing, whatever. So yeah, yeah, it's gonna be a long day for me, and uh, it's gonna you know get up and just uh, spend time with the family, which is great. I love it. You know what I mean? And just enjoy the Shabbat and all that good stuff, and uh, enjoy the sun. It's been nice weather here in Rhode Island, so we're gonna take advantage of that. So, yeah, Brian, yeah, yeah, doing an awesome job, guys. And if um check his channel, Visual Disturbance, the link is in the description right at the bottom. Uh, and uh, next week, Trey Harris is coming on with us. What are you going to do? Uh, what are you doing, like a Marvel comic uh, Nephilim type show? Uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm going to have to get a hold of him because I'm really looking forward to that. And um, I, there's just so much stuff in it to expose, you know, the Nephilim, mm. the giant narrative, all the stuff, the the – uh greek mythology all that stuff is embedded into all the marvel movies and dc movies uh it's it's pretty it's pretty baffling really when you look at the last two or three years um ever since avengers and stuff like that they really took it down a rabbit hole when you look at the quantum entanglement quantum realm you know uh there's all kinds of stuff that we go we go down a lot of rabbit holes on that one but uh, it's still gonna be a super super cool broadcast and then um 
but yeah, and then also speaking of visual disturbance, I'm gonna try. I'm trying to work on consistency to where I can have like you'll know when I'm coming on, like a live broadcast, like Thursday, for example, or whatever. I'm trying to come up with some timing and re, you know, trying to reevaluate the scheduling standpoint to where I can have like either you know like a couple of weeks or I mean, a couple of times a week where it's just live broadcast or whatnot. So I'm working on that for future endeavors and. Um, working on some megalithic sites, stuff like that, looking at ley lines and having all kinds of cool stuff that incorporate the visual disturbance channel. So go check it That's out when you get an opportunity. Stuff, man. Like it's so fascinating yeah. too, especially when you bring up uh, the best part, I think of the show too, is when you actually bring up the Google earth to give you a, like a real world visualization of what you're talking about. And uh, not just like some Photoshop picture or something. This is like real satellite footage of what uh, you're talking about and everything. And, uh, it just brings it to life. That's what it does. And um, so when you watch Brian's shows, you'll see what I'm talking about. And he brings what he's talking about to life. So you personally see where and what he's talking about. It's, um, amazing stuff, really is. And not bad for a guy who's got visual disturbance, huh? You know, I mean, a uh, guy yeah. who, uh, who's uh, been injured, okay, he could barely stand up half the time. But this guy rocks these shows, like these intros and all that, like this that we have, is all from him. He made the intros, uh, the bumpers here, the backgrounds and everything. And uh, yeah, this, this guy rocks it. He does it for this channel, his channel, uh, the Redneck History Channel, uh, and uh, you know, all, all sorts of stuff, man. Yeah, I appreciate it, Dan. I try my best. It, uh, it have, I have my days yeah. where, you know... Well, I know you know that, but, uh, but well, you know I thank the you Lord's for... using you as a powerful weapon, man. So keep yeah, it up. I, I thank you for the shout out. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. So we're going to wrap it up tonight and, um, thank you all for joining us. And next week, uh, yeah, it's going to be an awesome show. Um, these two, uh, him and Trey, they, this is their forte. I'm still learning more on this. The super, uh, well, I'm just going to sit back next week and uh, I'll chime in, whatever, but I'm going to sit back and let these two go guys go at it. Cause they'll be here for hours. Just uh, awesome stuff with the superheroes, <laughs> the Nephilim. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. looking forward for that. So next week it's 9 PM Eastern back to our normal time. And, uh, unless we could do eight o'clock. Yeah. But I think nine is better because of the algorithm, but, uh, whatever the case, we'll let you guys know, go to truthradioshow.com. And we'll see you guys next week and um, see you on uh, Breaking New World Order, our new show on Wednesday. So God bless Shalom. And remember, you are the resistance against evil. Blessings. Oops, uh, we forgot to do one thing. My bad. <laughs> Hold yeah. on. Time out. So pray. Uh, shame on me. You, know, you want to do the prayer? You want me to? Yeah, you go ahead, Dan, if you want right. to. So, Yeshua Jesus, we come before you and ask you to forgive us all of our individual trespasses, sins, abominations, uh, anything we may have done wrong, Lord. Just pray. We pray for um, you to forgive us and anoint us with your precious blood to cleanse our robes and cleanse, cleanse our garments before the for, so we can step before the Father. And, Father, we ask you, Lord, uh, to just uh, bless everybody here that's listening. And especially bless those people out there, Jehovah Witnesses, or people are thinking about joining Jehovah Witnesses, that they hear this message today, that they may this message may uh, sink into them like a seed. And we ask you, Lord, to water your seed into them, and that they won't go into this cult, or they come out of this cult, come out of Babylon. And we ask you in your mighty name, and also uh, pray for everybody out here that's going through any spiritual, physical, emotional, uh, psychological, or any emotions or anything, just any damage that's going on to them, harm or anything like that. We pray that you could come for them and just heal them and protect us all from the forces of evil. In your mighty name, we pray. Amen. And thank you so much for everything you've done for us. Amen. All right, guys. So now, take two. Um, God bless Shalom, and you are the resistance.